My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Tonight, I would want us to engage the spirit realm experientially. Because sometimes the crisis of the believer is the fact that he is bedeviled with knowledge without experience. When you talk about righteousness, he can give you all the scriptures about righteousness and explain accurately and exegetically the doctrine of righteousness. But if you go close to him, he's been struggling with masturbation for five years. He's been living in immorality for three years. So his life itself becomes a contradiction. He doesn't understand what is happening. He doesn't like what he's doing. He knows he shouldn't do what he's doing, but he's, he's plagued. Because what he fails to understand is that the experiences we have in time are not born in time. The experiences we have in time, we have them because we are containers that were created with vacuums to handle and to give expression to realities that are born from the realm of the spirit. So the guy understands something cognitively, but he doesn't know the spirit that manipulates the realities of those dimensions that he's interacting with on account of the nature of his brain. So instead of him to dig into the spirit and to understand how to manipulate reality from the realm, where the foundation of life dwells, he's in time making noise and doing all the expression. They hail him as what and what, whatever it is called. But when you draw close to his life, his life is a statement that is oblivious of reality is born from the realms of the spirit. So this morning we will engage the spirit realm experience. So that something will break in your soul. That is when I will be permitted to come and speak over your life and over the territory. You have met all the apostles. So that one is not and I know. The same people we drink from you too have come from them. So the thing is not about meeting people anymore. The thing is, what are you doing with what you have received? So in order to be sure you will do something with it, we will practice it this morning before we leave this place. For those of you who are already tired, it's a sign of where you are operating from. That's why the devil plays with your life. In case you don't know, a 10-year-old lady who is a witch, this is when she's flying high. And she started flying from 12 midnight. It's around 5 a.m. she will descend. Meanwhile, you, you came here and it's 2 a.m. already you are tired because the energy that you subscribe from is the energy of the flesh. Right now, ATP is exhausted. That's why you are the way you are. You don't understand the energy that comes from the womb of Zion. <laughs> you see why we are religious people. So the people in the witchcraft coven are more spiritual than us because they know how to partner with spirits. We talk about spirits, but we don't know how to relate with them. So the experiences that we should gain on account of our interaction with the spirit that formulate our advantage, we don't have them. But a witch of 10 years old knows what to do to conjure a demon and he can fly on the wings of that demon. And it's around 4 a.m. that she's, she's on the roof of a building and doing like this and they having nightmare. You, that 4 a.m., you are yawning because you have exhausted all the energy. When I began to have crisis in life, I decided that I will not go the way of religion. Because I saw that even people in my family began to die. So I knew that this thing is not language. This thing is reality. And this morning we will trust God to travel a bit deeper. Are you ready this morning? Let's take the second shot. Just in case you have an expectation. I don't know if you have one. But just in case you do. Can you lift your hands toward heaven and talk to the Lord? Whisper something to the very heights of Zion where your advantage is domiciled. Humankind was not designed to live as mortal beings. 
We are the only creatures that God designed to live like a spirit. When he created the dogs, they were created in the order of falling animals. They are alive, had its strength in their bodies. They functioned by biological life. But when God decided to fabricate the human nature and the humankind, the design was strategically formulated in such a way that man will live like a spirit, drawing his strength from that spirit that dwells in the midst of the coals of fire. This morning, can you make demand on heaven that everything that constitutes your advantage, you have looked upon yourself and you have seen the frailty of flesh. The things that you should do, you know you ought to, you have tried, but you have realized that the ability to furnish those realities is not within your context. And this is why you look up to the hills from whence cometh our help. <laughs> this is where prayer becomes a spiritual economy beyond, beyond religion, beyond cliché. It's a desperate attempt to draw life from where life itself dwells. So that everything that was written concerning you before the foundation of the world can find expression. Can you draw from heaven this morning? Forget about the person around you. You were praying, maybe you were shouting, but now you are looking up to a spirit and trusting that by all means, something will come upon you. <laughs> there are some creatures walking into this building. <laughs> all we need to do this morning is just to allow because the armies of Zion have gone ahead of us. I see beings, beings coming clothed with light, with light, walking from this side of the building, and they are walking. There is a procession from heaven. All you need to do is just to align. It's just to align. This morning is not a night of power. It's a time of alignment. Your dimensions will open because there is a river. He said there is a river that flows from the throne that make it glad the city of God. You need to align. You need to align. Focus on heaven. Forget about the preacher. Something is already happening. There's a movement in heaven. Listen. 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 There's a recruitment campaign already ongoing. If you are distracted this morning, you'll be amazed. Because God is not out to showcase a man this morning. God is out to raise an army, an army. You are looking forward to see an apostle. God is raising an army. And as I speak right now, there are seven ladies, listen, that are already implicated into the intercessory ministry because God wants to raise the boroughs. Women that have the power to command the heavens. Churches in the spirit, churches, churches, they can move the heavens, the heavens. As they speak, even the stars in their courses will back the armies of Zion. And as I speak, dear Holy Spirit, the ones who are anointing this morning, let your hand begin to touch them. The Deborahs, the Deborah generation, arise from Latvia. These ones are seasoned intercessors. They will stand on the altar and they will defy the energy of flesh by their vocal cords, their vocal cords. Their voices will rise like trumpets in the heights of Zion. Darkness, darkness is about to be destroyed. Hey! Hey, Lamanu Asusu Hata. Hey, Le Casiso Rakapayas. There's a light hovering in the choir here. See, some of you, these ladies here, you are part of what was spoken. But alignment is lacking. <laughs> when people struggle, it's a body. It's a body. It's a body. It's a body. Lord, show mercy, show mercy, show mercy. Let that flame come again. Let that flame come again. There are some people that missed out a while ago. Lord, show mercy, show mercy, show mercy. Let the flames come again. 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 Let the flames, let the flames come. Let the flames, let the flames come again. Let the flames. Hey, Saparaka, su 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 su. Hey, Latin, Tapara. Let the flames come again. Let the flames. Flames of fire. Flames of fire. Flames of fire. He said, and I saw one of the seraphims, and he carried the coals of fire. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Let the flames.
listen. I saw a big vision now. And I saw a young man, and in his right hand there's a star. And I began to inquire of the Lord, what is this? Is this one sorcery or what? Because is this a sorcery? Is this a sorcerer? And God said, Look, that is raising a prophet here that will speak breaking news from heaven. You know, if you study the book of Revelation, the prophets did not just prophesy because they wanted to give all wild people. When the prophet spoke on it, it's because a seal broke in heaven. And every time he spoke, there was a change. The topography of the earth's realm was altered because his utterances were born out of his ability to see into the heavens that scrolls are broken. These ones have the power to break through the realms of the heavens. It's a signature in the spirit. It's a signature. It's a signature. Father, there's a ranking entity among us that is about to rise. A ranking entity that is about to rise. And so, Holy Spirit, the prophet you are anointing this morning, from the left to the right, from the front to the back, let your hand rest upon him. That one that has the power to move the heavens, to see in the realms of the spirit, and to alter the patterns of the constellation. As I stretch my hand, Lord Jesus, let that anointing begin to isolate him. Let the anointing begin to isolate him. Holy Spirit, touch! Listen, the reason some grounds are hard is because alignment is not achieved. The moment you achieve alignment, you realize there's no hard ground anywhere. Find that precursor in the spirit and navigate there. And you'll be amazed what will happen. People are receiving fresh wine because an army is about to rise. An army. You will know that this thing is not a function of decision. This thing is not a function of intelligence. This thing is not a function of human ability. Something will come upon you and you will be changed. When Saul met, when Samuel met Saul, he said that the spirit of God will come upon you and your heart will be changed and you will become another man. And he said, Samuel, as he journeyed past the, the, the sepulchre of Nachal, he met a company of prophets and the spirit of God came upon him. His heart was changed and he became another man. And Samuel and Saul began to prophesy until people said he saw also among the prophets. The ability to prophesy was never there, but something came upon him. Something came upon him. He said, and the hand of God came upon Elijah and he outran the chariot of Jehah. Even not to Jesse, there was no speed with the guy, but something, 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 something. There's something that comes upon a man, and his natural ability are defined. He begins to walk by the energy of life, the energy of the spirit, the ability of the spirit. That is what alignment does. Alignment brings you to a place where you function like a god. There's a fresh wine, a fresh wine. You want to go ahead and speak to the Lord? I've seen a trumpet. There's a trumpet in the spirit. Hey, listen. Hey. There's a trumpet. I'm seeing a trumpet in the spirit. It's the spirit of prophecy. It's the spirit of prophecy. As we pray now, most of you, your vocal cords will open. And you begin to prophesy. Meanwhile, those of you who are spectators, continue. You are doing a great job. <laughs> By the time you check, it will be 5 a.m. in the morning. And we will leave here. <laughs> Shelele koboro bobos, elila kaisana tabarsk, kazase zezesa, bororosa sanitale. Ah, ay 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 ay. Holy Spirit, omale kazozo rabakali zanatai. River flow, river flow, let it turn a river flow in your church once again. Let it turn it There's a spirit of prophecy hovering here. And so, Holy Spirit, 
look upon as many vessels as are yielded. This is not about shouting, it's not about volume, it's the supply of the spirit. Right now, as you are, if you are yielded, the spirit will come upon you. Holy Spirit, look upon the vessels that are yielded now and let that prophetic spirit begin to alight upon them. Holy Ghost, from the left to the right, from the front to the back, begin to alight upon them. I open your vocal cords. I open your vocal cords. I open your vocal cords. Oh my God, the prophetic waters. The prophetic waters. Omele kososoria. Eya. Help them so they are not injured. Sari na baraka pasisi zalaga babash. Raba babash. Raba babash. Raba babash. Raba babash. Raba babash. So prete fono zorakadia sifrata. There are many things. Many things are happening at the same time. Many things. There are many things. I just saw a young man now in the spirit. And he bent somewhere. And his whole body was on fire. What was he doing? He was praying. But what he was generating in the spirit were flames of fire. Flames of fire. Flames of fire. Flames of fire. Somebody is being set on fire. Your altar is about to burn. An intercessor. A radical. A wide intercessor. A wide, wide intercessor. Like a white ox. It's about to be a coronated here. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Who is that one you are setting on fire? Let the flames pour. Let the flames pour. Let the flames pour. That radical intercession that can shut down altars in darkness. Altars in darkness. I see him challenging darkness. Burning with flames. And give him praise. There are many encounters going on now. Many encounters. I just I saw a vision. I saw a young man sat down, and there was a large book, a large book like a scroll, in front of him, and he's writing. And he was writing. And he was writing. You see, there are many things happening. We don't need to be altering it because we we'll, we will spend the whole time. An angel will touch you now. Listen. Stop the sound. Thank you. There is somebody that is receiving a scroll in the spirit. This one is being promoted to the company of elders. And in the days of the fullness of his manifestation, he will not give word of knowledge to men. He will give word of knowledge to nations. And he will sit down and write the destinies of nations like Pah Elton. He will speak about the things that will befall nations of the world. It's a scroll in the spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. <laughs> you see, we are witnessing in time. So God gives us the privilege to confirm. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, one has gone down already. That's another. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. We are these ones that you are handing over scrolls of nations. Scrolls of nations. Bringing them into the company of patriarchs. Holy Spirit, right now, I ask from the left to the right, from the front to the back. Touch. Let that anointing rest upon that person. There's somebody somebody's two feet is about to be set on fire where you are standing suddenly it will look as if you are standing in the midst of a of course of fire it's all god is doing this guy is supposed to be in another nation that's where his destiny is but there's an altar that have planted him in africa for him to amount to nothing so it's fire it's fire that will launch you to the nation fire fire and so holy spirit of god that one that has been planted and stunted here in Africa, whereas his destiny is in the nations of the world, I set him on fire. Shato, Ubo Akatai, Tatalita Toa, Saparata Kobe, Esuna, Tatalitoa, Sopataya. I release that fire. I uproot 
you from where you are planted and I launch you to your destination in the name of Jesus. Help that brother so he's not injured. There's a glove just sat in the hands of somebody. And this, the hand I saw is a female finger. A glove just sat in. As if you are going to operate on somebody. So I know it's the healing anointing. Father, just help the sister quickly so we don't. Father, Father, thank you, Lord. The angel could not do it. It's already activated. Father, in the name of Jesus, in case there's another one, help her again. Father, in the name of Jesus, in case there's another one, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing. As you have revealed in the spirit, as a law enforcement agent, I activate it in time. So let it be written. So let it be established. Coronated, coronated intercessor. Go and raise kings. We stand with the testimonies of the patriarchs that have walked through the borders of this land. We stand upon the intercessions of the intercessors that have labored over this land in order to bear the move of God. We align with the prophecies of the fathers that have gone forth over this territory in order to create a spiritual atmosphere for the move of God to find expression. We stand in the covenants that have gone into the foundation of this land by the sacrifices of the fathers and on the strength of all that have been done in righteousness we make a decree tonight that the window for the move of God will open over this territory in the name of Jesus sit down let me share the word of God with us God I think now it's no longer 25 minutes it's 15 minutes let me share the word of God for 15 minutes because we must pray this one we must have to pray I want to show you that it's possible for you to shift in the spirit. I was teaching in the Bible college and then we had taught the lecture was from 8 to 6 p.m. So we did the class for more than 10 hours. But we started a bit early. When we were about rounding up at about 5 30, everybody was in front. As I was talking to some of them, we were now say yes, I deliberately handled it like this because I want to teach you a practical. Because when I teach them in the Bible school, we do practical at the end of every class. Sometimes I show them, I say, okay, let me teach you the mystery of sound. And then we are not doing anything, we just sit down quiet. And I tell the keyboardist, play this chord, play this chord, play this chord. And then the keyboardist begin to play that chord. And then I'm telling them what is happening. After a while, the thing hits the building. Then somebody begins to prophesy. Now, nobody spoke, but sound in itself as an energy vibrator has the capacity to transport spirit. Because spirit moves on sound. Sound are the carriers of spirit reality. That's why every time you hear that there is a move of the spirit, you hear a sound. Spirit travels on sound vibration. And then this day, I wanted to show them how to migrate from the energy of the flesh to the energy of the spirit. So when they were exhausted, I taught them. I said, tongues are not vocabularies for intimidating the devil. That is part of it. But tongues primarily are transport mediums that carry a mortal man to the realm of the divine. That his, his mortal phrases can be swallowed up by the immortal possibilities that are locked up in God. That's why the Bible says that wait upon the Lord they mount up with wings like the eagles. Meanwhile, some people pray in tongues. It's, the more they pray, the more they become weak. So I told them to focus and not to pray loud, just to focus. And I told them as they begin to pray, they will notice that they will begin to zero into their spirit. 
Before now, when they pray, they, they are floating everywhere. They sound everywhere. But as they settle in on God, they will zero into their spirit. And the more they pray, the further they will enter their spirit. Until a point will come, even if somebody speaks and they hear it, it will be like the person is speaking from many thousand kilometers away. Because they are entering deep. And after a while, they will break into the waters that are locked up in their heart. And they will begin to experience God in another dimension. And as they began to pray, nobody heard the other person. Everybody was just praying. After five minutes, you hear, ah! somebody will scream and the power of God will throw the person somewhere. Because we decided to shut down all of the flesh. Hey, hey, somebody's here. Hey, hey, hey. No, no, no. What we do is sponsored by spirits. We are only participators. So it's, it's important we allow the spirits that make these things happen to take the victory. Elohim Adonah Elohim Adonah Meanwhile, everything that happened a few moments ago was just me taking advantage of what Shadrach downloaded from heaven. So, um, Cephas, Philip Cephas. It was what Philip Cephas downloaded and time did not allow him. That's what I came. This is what Jesus said when he said, Others have labored. Do you have entered into their labor? <laughs> so, it's what he downloaded that we just came to bask him. But now I need to teach us the word of God a bit and then we will come and download another one. This morning, me, I don't have work. Just to give a few perspectives. The people that will bring down the dimensions of heaven, don't you see that they are both wearing black? In the name of Jesus. I want to explain certain eternal principles to us this morning that we don't just need to know about, but we need to practice. Apostle Arome, who happens to be my father in the Lord. He has taught us and he has emphasized again and again that practice is superior to learning. Most times the reason we have so much problem is we know so much but we practice so little. So even what we know itself becomes a body. So when there is crisis we are looking for one thing to pick from the, the memory bank. Meanwhile what is attacking us is coming from the womb of the spirit. So when we exhaust everything we have in our head then we become weary and broken. But every time we practice, we press into the spirit realm. We are making demand. Even if we don't know exactly how to enter, the law of consistency itself we have woken the spirit that will lead us there. So I want to show you some things this morning that you need to practice in order to become strong. I know Sephas have done justice to the scripture, but I will still read it again. I will move one, just one light from there. We will dwell on it for some time and then we will come and pray. When I saw your team, I think there are not too many scriptures that bear that thing. Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31. Let's read that scripture. The body that came to the heart of Shadrach Peters can be isolated from that scripture. Good morning. He said, Has thou not heard? Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not? Neither is weary. There is no such of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not 
faith. You see, when the prophet was trying to explain to us the potency of the spiritual strategy and economy of waiting, it was important for him to bring us a contrast, a contrast between two entities that were extremes of themselves. So he began by taking his reference from God. And he did not just mention the name of God. He went down to give up the credentials of the personality he was talking about. And he needed to do a thorough job just in case you have not heard about God. He said, have you not known? Just in case you have not known. I want to explain. What he wanted to explain to us was not God. It's not the doctrine of God he was trying to explain. Neither was he trying to explain the doctrine of man. He was trying to reveal to us the potency of the act of waiting. But the only way he could communicate the powers that are locked up in that spiritual enterprise of waiting was to bring to us a contrast between two entities that were not in any way matched to themselves. One of the entities was at the lowest ebb, and the other was at the highest, the zenith of all the possibilities in which strength could be defined. He said, Have you not known, have you not heard, has it not been said to you that the everlasting God, he didn't just call God, the first thing he did is that he invoked his everlasting dimensions to let you know that this God is before beginning and after end, he will still exist. So the personality I want to talk to you about is one that time has no power to deplete his essence. He is not just a God. If he invoked the name God alone, that would have been sufficient. But he needed to invoke to you the everlasting dimension of God. So that in case you want to check this God, at any point you communicate him, his essence is the way it is. You can increase it, you can reduce it. And he said, this everlasting God, he said he is the creator of the ends of the earth. As the creator, he was exposing us to a dimension of God's superlative powers and ability. You know, the first time God was introducing in, in the Bible, he was introduced as a creator. That's the Elohimistic dimension of God. There are two major dimensions of God that reveal his power and his might. The first dimension of God revealed in scripture as touching his power and might is his Elohimistic dimension. And that dimension of power is the ability of God to fabricate all things from nothing. So he has the power to bring into existence things that never exist before. A reality that cannot be found in any plane or within the context of any entity. And the second dimension of God's power that was revealed in scripture is his Jehovahistic dimension. The Jehovahistic dimension of God reveals his right and authority to demand anything he wants to demand from creation. That's sovereignty. As you are now, if you tear your shirt, I don't have the powers to say why. Because it's your shirt. But if I invoke the Jehovahistic dimension, even though your tongue is your tongue, you don't have the right to touch it because I own it. The Elohimistic dimension reveals God as the creator of your tongue. So you owe all credit to him. The Jehovahistic dimension reveals him as having authority over your tongue, even though it's in your possession. That is why the money in your bank account now that you work for 30 days to earn belongs to God. Because it's Jehovah. Because it's Jehovah. No, 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 no. Even this suit you are wearing belongs to him. Meanwhile, if we check carefully, the money you used to buy this suit, maybe you went and laid work somewhere for 30 days and saved meticulously before you were able to raise money to buy this suit. But as Jehovah is the owner. And on the strength of that, he can judge you for manipulating or mutilating this suit. So you can say, my body is my own. So I can do anything I want. If you do anything you want with your body, Jehovah will come and he will judge you and he will be right. So that's another dimension of power. It's a dimension of power that reveals his authority. The first dimension of power reveals his might. The second dimension of power reveals his authority. That was why when God was revealing himself to Moses, when he entered into eternity past,
us to see how God fabricated the Israel. The first dimension God revealed was the Elohim. So Moses saw him design the whole world from nothing. He just stood and he said, Let there be light. And there was light. He said, Let the light, oh my God. He, I, I wonder what Moses was going through when he was seeing that power. You know, when you read this thing, sometimes you read it in a hurry. Imagine if your eyes open and then you began to see from the plains of a mountain. And then you saw a being that stood nowhere because you couldn't isolate where he was standing. Because creation itself had no existence. So you don't know where he stands because he said in the beginning of heaven created heavens and the earth. Where was God standing when he created heavens and the earth? That one Moses' understanding was unfruitful. So there's no way he could write it. He doesn't he was seen, but he didn't know what he was seeing. So the first thing that revelation did to him was to reveal to him that he's a mortal man. The being you are interacting with is operating in a plane where you cannot judge him cognitively. So there are certain things you will see, but you don't know them. And then you saw a vision, they say, What did you see? There is no word to articulate it because you enter into a realm of intelligence that is beyond everything you were taught. Your mind can't crystallize it and you can't express it cognitively. So Moses just said in the beginning, God created. We didn't bother to tell us where was God in the beginning when there was no heaven or earth. Because the being was operating from a realm that was beyond vacuum. He was operating from a realm that was beyond time. He stood in the eternities. The eternities that were within himself in the community of the Godhead. And the dimension of himself that he revealed to him was his power to bring eternity out of nothing. So suddenly, Moses was seeing this creature. And all of a sudden, he saw a limitless expanse. And he saw heaven and saw earth. How that happened, he didn't know. And then this being carried him million years into another dimension and then he saw that suddenly the earth he saw was now without form and the earth was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and then this being that everything came out of began to walk inside what he created his, his brain must have knocked at that time imagine that I bring a balloon out of myself and then you saw me bring a balloon out of myself obviously I'm bigger than the balloon and then the next second you saw me walking inside the balloon. You will just say no. Then you will faint. When you wake up, you continue the vision. <laughs> and he saw all of a sudden the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then this being stood. After he woke out of the waters, he now said, Let there be light. And light showed up from the way. I don't know how Moses did not faint. But whatever happened to Moses on that mountain gave him the right to become an immortal being. That was why when Moses walked among men, he was no longer a mortal man. <laughs> they caused that Jacob, one of the patriarchs of Israel, placed on Reuben. When Moses came down from the mountain, they said, let Reuben live. At that time, see where he was operating from? Only God dwelt there. That's why in Deuteronomy chapter 33, from verse 1, the Bible said, Moses... He stood upon the mountains of Paran and he saw the Lord descending with 10,000 of his saints to judge. That is what will happen at the end of time when earth is accomplished. The same vision that Enoch saw seven generations after Adam. So Moses walked through from the beginning to the end. The life you are living now in, the, in, your, in your 75 years or 120 years that you say, oh boy, I'll be old man. Moses lived from the beginning to the end by prophetic powers. Moses knew what happened before the beginning. And Moses journeyed through time and went to the end. So Moses, if you, were, if you ask Moses, he can tell you the story of your life. He saw the beginning, he saw the end. By prophet. You see why we don't even know anything about the prophet. We think prophetic is the prophet. We don't know what the prophet is. Prophet. If they ask Moses those days, who is Shedrach and Luntu, they will tell you, that Shetra came from here and here. You ask him who is my Goropo, he will tell you my Goropo came from Bedo City. Then you will say, What is Benue? Because the word Benue would not have existed in that generation. But because of prophetic powers, he entered into the past, he entered into the future. But that's not my emphasis. He saw God displayed so much might and power, and the revelation of God that was revealed was the Elohim. So God was the creator of all things. And you know that as advanced as science is, science has not been able to create any living thing, not even a blade of grass. Science cannot create a blade of grass. That's to reveal to you the difference between the 
Elohim and everything in creation. The day science creates a blade of grass, that time science will have migrated to its end. And then when man fell and did what he wanted to do with his body, then another dimension was evoked. That's the first time the word Jehovah Elohim was used. And then he came to judge man. The guy taught her, Is it not my body? You know, we are like that. It's my mouth. I will say what I want to say. You don't know Jehovah. They taught you in Bible school that God is Lord. That's all you heard. You didn't hear well. But the prophet wanted to communicate to us. Listen, you know, when we talk about the subject of prayer, people don't know what prayer is. They think prayer is just to come and ask God for bread and wine. This creation is gathered together because of the incense that rises from the earth. The day prayer ends in this world, the world will be destroyed. Have you not heard? He invoked the powers of the creator. So that in case you understand what he's talking about, compared to man, you will know that there is no basis of comparison. Because this creator, he said he's the everlasting God. And according to his constitution, he doesn't know how to faint. He doesn't know how to be with him. And then he now came back to another dimension and he began to explain man. He now said, but among men, the greatest and the strongest of men is the youth. He said, but even the youth will faint. That means everything in the realm of man, the best in the realm of man, cannot compare to the realm of God. He said, the best among men is the youth. He said, but the youth will faint and the young men will utterly fall. Because according to the design of man, the moment he loses contact with the dimension of the divine, he is bound to be played and to faint. He said, but there is a strategy in the spirit that if that weak man is able to apply, something will happen to him and his frailty will be swallowed up. So he said, the man that is destined to faint and to fall utterly, if only he subscribed to the technology of creating, something will happen to him that even himself will not understand. He said, he that wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up with wings like the eagles. Something will happen to that man. This immortal God that has no comparison among men, the moment a man begins to wait on God, he said there is something that happens to that man, and that man ascends to the height of a God. And he said the man will run, he will not fail, he will walk, he will not be buried. What is that technology that makes a man become a God? It is the strategy of waiting. So it reveals to us that prayer is deeper than making demand for heaven. Prayer is an infrastructure put together by God's intelligence to make a mortal man a God of earth. It's a day that wait upon the Lord. They shall put up with wings that they eat. Then they will run. When they run, instead of utterly falling as men, when they run, they will begin to run like a God. They will run, they will not faint. It was God alone that the Bible said does not faint. He said, But when the man waits, when he begins to run, instead of fainting, which is the destiny of a man, when he begins to run, then you see a God. That is why you see somebody comes and he speaks and then spirits obey him. Then you can understand what is happening. He has waited. When he does what a normal man does, his results are different. What happened? He has waited. So the technology of living the supernatural on earth, the Bible was said it was fabricated in the intelligence of waiting. This is where prayer becomes the deepest spiritual transaction that is possible in time. They that wait upon the Lord, they will mount up with wings like the eagles. They will run, they will not be willing. They will walk, they will not fail. But I thought that the record that was in time was that have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he willing? According to the record that was available to man, the only personality that doesn't faint or is willing was God. How come it's now possible for man to operate like a God? Because the technology has been introduced, the technology of waiting. So when we are talking about waiting, 
we are talking about a strategy of the spirit of making you to walk in the greatest potential of your life. The only way a man can walk according to the writings of ordination that was written concerning him before the foundation of the world is by waiting upon the Lord. When a man begins to wait upon the Lord, in a short while, he becomes like a God. The things he was struggling with, that he had gone from one end of the earth to the other, looking for solution. What he doesn't understand is that the solution is already wired into the spiritual technology, waiting. So the guy thought his challenge was masturbation. He thought his challenge was poverty. His challenge is not masturbation. His challenge is that he doesn't know how to wait. Because masturbation is a normal thing for men. Poverty is a normal thing for men. Lack is a normal thing for men. Sin is a normal thing for men because man is falling. So if you want to find out what your true challenge is, is to look upon the prescription that was given to humankind, giving him the capacity to be like a God. And the only way that capacity can be realized is by waiting. The reason you see a lot of people backward and languishing in sin is because that operation of the Spirit is no longer found in our operations. Waiting upon the Lord. The crisis of your life has one root. It's not the devil. The devil is not so powerful. If Jesus comes to this world and is hung on the cross, died and resurrected, and the devil is still ruling over us, then it means the devil is supposed to be the most powerful entity on earth. The devil is not so powerful. The problem is that man has refused to take advantage of the things that are valuable to him. He said, Take that wait upon the Lord, they will not come between us. There is a place you travel into when you begin to wait upon the Lord. That you will find out that your walls can cause the moon to stand. There's a place you can travel to in God that you will find out that your walls can cause cancer to deplete. You didn't touch the person, he came with cancer. They flew him in from India. All you need to say was is to be healed. And then, in the eyes of everybody, cancer deplete. You are not a man, you are a God. But the technology is what they are upon the Lord. The reason we are where we are is because we have refused to wait. The road that we follow to travel into places of power and authority with spirit is the path of waiting. Everything that Jesus paid for and give and has given to us as a promise can only be realized if we learn the art of waiting. You can study the whole scripture and memorize it. You will never enter into your experience. The scriptures come alive only in the presence of God. A man who cannot wait cannot understand the scripture. He will do business with it in his mind, but he will not have to change the circumstance because it is in the presence that the scriptures are activated. Jesus was speaking to people directly and they were living in sin, they were living in unbelief. That's what you will call a Rema word. You heard him talk vocally. So even Rema words are not powerful unless the spirit comes upon it and admits it. They walked with Jesus every day. He was talking to them with him the Until the Rema, until the spirit comes upon the Rema. So when Jesus wanted to depart, the Bible said, He grew upon them. Open he their understanding that they may understand the scripture. So everything they were hearing were left as in their heads. And those things they were hearing, they didn't hear it by reading it. Jesus taught it to them. But they didn't change their story. They were dead in their head until the spirit came upon it. The moment the spirit came upon it, the guys went out and they became champions. They that wait upon the Lord. Most of you here are aware that God wants to use you. You will wait until when you check your head in the mirror, you now see white hair everywhere. Your hair will be grey. Then you will go and calm down. You, will, you, you may have told everybody you are an apostle to the nations. You are a prophet. It's when you become 70 years that you will discover that, no, 
you don't become a prophet because God told you right. You become a prophet because you master the art of waiting. Because an angel can appear to you now and say, Shadrach, you are going to the nations of the world. And then you go and tell all your friends, we be the nations of the world. And then you neglect the act of waiting. The next time we check you out, you will be 75 years. So maybe you will go to the nations with your country or walking it. They that wait upon the Lord. This morning, I didn't even come to pray to you. You have heard a lot of messages. The problem is that you have not practiced them. That's why I told you we will pray this morning. Because a Lord don't understand what waiting means. The thing is just to come to God and bo 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 ha wa 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 wa. Check time. Well, this way I remain 30 minutes. Tako bako 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 bako. Ele kaka kuto bako kuto. Wala kato. Oh boy, I I I had to come, had to come, had to come. On the check, they just send one text message. <laughs> Waiting upon the Lord is first of all a realization that you are a mortal man and in you is no value. So you come to lay yourself on the, sacri- on the altar of sacrifice. Because you have evaluated yourself, you discover that if it is based on yourself and all you have, you can't amount to anything. So you came to God to receive an exchange. So waiting upon the Lord is the most desperate spiritual point. A man coming and holding on to the horn of the altar and saying, I will not go until you exchange my weakness for your strength. That kind of prayer is not a prayer you pray in the morning. It's not a prayer you pray absent-mindedly. You will be there until your weaknesses are literally exchanged. The prayer doesn't end until you see God in yourself. It's just like the blacksmith that works on the silver. He will keep burning that silver until he can see his image in that silver. The job has not ended. So you will see him tending the fire, tending the fire. So you may begin. It doesn't stop after 30 minutes. You will do it until you sense an energy. You know you have migrated. And then that point comes when the next time you open your eyes, you thought you were walking like this. But the next time you open your eyes, you are at the end of that door here. You know you are no longer your physical geography. You have migrated. Pato, pato, pato. The problem you were praying for, you will ascend until you can't remember there was a problem. Heaven, you are seeing things that are beyond. That's where you can come down. Somebody say, I woke up yesterday. God said, I should bring this to you. And then he hands you money and it's exactly your house rent. Men who don't wait don't see wonders. When you tell them about the supernatural, like the story. That's why you come for me to say, Ah, God is touching somebody. Then they are looking. They want to see how God touched you. The story to them. You say, An angel of the Lord is here. Some they are hearing for the first time. Some people still see angels. They will tell you. You people still see angels. Are you sure it's not a lie? When I lie, I lie. Is you are far from the civilization of heaven. You are on earth. You are actually on earth. The things you call impossibility, there are men that are working with it every day of their lives. And the reason is not because they are special. The reason is because they have mastered the art of waiting. That's why when you go to wait, the first thing that fights you are the things that your soul is connected to in time. Because waiting is actually detachment from time and connecting to eternity. It's a place where you stay on, you break into the God's soul. If you have not broken into the God's soul, you have not waited. Maybe you went to speak in tongues. And you can still speak in tongues and fornicate. Maybe you went to speak in tongues and you can still speak in tongues and be afraid. But if you stay there until you detach from this realm and enter the God's soul, from the spirit of fornication itself, we know there is no place to dwell. It will vanish. Isaiah was prophesying and was enjoying himself. But his mouth was full of woes. He didn't know. He was operating by the gift and the anointing. 
But when he decided to do serious business and he broke into the God's soul and he encountered God, the first thing that happened to him was that Heracles carried the bow and took his tongue. When the man asked the God's soul, his weaknesses are swallowed up. So every time you check your life and there is still a weakness, know that you are not living from the plane of the God's soul. It is possible to establish it in your bedroom. And if you don't enter the God's soul, your purpose will never be fulfilled. Because purpose was not designed to be fulfilled on earth. Purpose was designed to be fulfilled in Eden. So if you don't know how to carry Eden everywhere you go, you will struggle in this world and you will never fulfill purpose. That's why Jesus, the Bible said, he was on earth. But walking in Nazareth, the Bible said, the Son of Man, which is in heaven. That's what Jesus said about himself. So everywhere Jesus went, he carried the atmosphere of heaven. So when he speaks, is the possibilities of heaven that takes place. We don't understand the powers of waiting. Every time a man builds the culture of waiting, what he does is that he builds a radar around himself. He walks in that open heaven. And that is why when he speaks, heaven is on. Because even though he's walking on earth, he's actually standing in heaven. Elijah, he, had, he was standing in the palace, but then before God, who might stand? So the secret of wonder is where you are standing in the spirit. And when you are standing, is determined by the quality of your waiting. A man who cannot wait. This is why you see a lot of people not fulfilling purpose. God has spoken to them. They've had encounters. Angels have appeared to them. But it never manifests. Because what they don't know is that the realm where that encounter came from, they must carry it every day of their life in order to be able to manifest the possibilities of that encounter. Christians don't wait. So they depart from Eden. <laughs> you will watch as an apostle. Everybody in your family will die. And you will be renowned with your title as an apostle. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. I was telling you this morning. I said, when Jesus said you are the salt of the earth, he was not talking to all believers. You saw him speaking to everybody. But he was actually talking to the believers that will subject themselves to the way of prayer. Because when we run through the whole scripture, the only way the earth is preserved is by prayer. <laughs> this is why the Bible will say, by his stripes you are healed, but not all believers are healed. The guy that is healed or works in divine health is the guy that subjects himself to understand the economy of healing. So that scripture is for the man that we understand the economy. It seems as if he's spoken to everybody, but not everybody experiences it. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. All of us have the Holy Ghost. How many people are manifesting power? There's a protocol of power. So when he says you shall receive power, he's talking to the man that will subject himself to the protocol of power. Because God speaks, the laws of the realm will be validated. You are the sort of the earth. You check the whole scripture. And every generation that the earth was preserved, it was preserved from the incense that arose from the altars of men of prayer. Adam and his wife were driven from the garden. And after they left the garden of Eden, they were still in Eden, but they had gone out of the ambience of God in the garden. And they began to raise children. And evil entered their camp. And Cain slew a bear. And God brought the judgment upon Cain. And Cain went and built another city on the east side of Eden. The city of Lord, and there was no hope for the earth anymore because evil was growing until a man killed and he said, If Cain will be, be avenged, if Abel will be avenged sevenfold, he will be avenged seventy and sevenfold because his faith around God, evil was raving in the world. There was no possibility for the purpose of God to find expression anymore. And in Genesis chapter 4, said God came unto Adam, set in the place of Abel that came to him. And he said, set, gave birth to Enos. And he said, from there did men begin to call 
called the name of the Lord. That was when salvation came back to this world. God was in heaven. Adam was now giving birth, but there was no intervention from heaven. On what men began to call upon the name of the Lord. That was how men like Enoch were born. The earth plundered into darkness again. And the Bible said, God said, My soul will not continually strive with men. And God sentenced earth to judgment to be destroyed. And then suddenly, we heard again in Genesis chapter 6, He said, And Noah found favor with God. Noah became the preserver of the earth. You will think Noah was just trolling and he found favor. It was when Noah came out from the ark in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, that we knew what Noah did to find favor. He was the man of the altar. The Bible said when he came out, he erected an altar to the Lord and there he sacrificed all the clean beasts. So it was Noah's intercession that brought him to the place of favor. And if Noah was not an intercessor, the earth would have crumbled. Because God can destroy this earth and start again. He told Moses, I will, I will, everybody, I will destroy all of them in Exodus 32. Because he is suffering. So the earth was preserved by a sword called Noah. And the reason Noah was able to preserve this earth because he was a man of waters. The earth plunged into darkness again and Nimrod rose and began to build the Tower of Babel. And God scattered the language of humankind and set them apart. There was no purpose because there was no way man could come together to formulate any purpose anymore until a man would speak from the halls of the Chaldees by the name Abraham. When Abraham entered the promised land, then Abraham again we saw in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 6 that Abraham built an altar to the God that appeared to him. So Abraham was also a man of the altar. When God says you are the salt of the earth, he is talking about the intercessors, not just the believers. A man who cannot pray, have no business with preserving the earth well. He doesn't even know how the earth works. Because the earth is manipulated by thrones in the spirit. And until you journey in the path of intercession, you cannot make contact with thrones. When we preach the God, we save thrones. But when we pray, we go beyond saving souls, we save the earth. That's why in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, he said, My people who are called by the name, we humble themselves and pray. I, I will hear them from heaven and I will come down and I will heal their land. The creation that is in bondage, when men of prayer lies, they begin to deliver creation. That's why I say intercession is superior to preaching. Intercession does not only save souls, it saves the whole of creation. Did you not notice that men like Shetrach, Mishtak, and Abednego, men of prayer, when they were cast into fire, suddenly fire lost the ability to burn. Because in eternity, fire is not supposed to burn. Fire is supposed to purify. It's only in hell that fire burns. So when you touch fire on head and fire burns, it's because earth, earth is now a prototype of Hades. But these men, because of prayer, they have the ability to bring the protocol of creation back to the original design. So even when they were cast into fire, fire could not burn them. It only purified them. Because the role of fire in heaven is to purify. That's why the throne of God dwells in the midst of the coals of fire and the seraphims that are the beings of holiness. They touch the tongue of a prophet and he was purified. The preservers of the earth are the intercessors among men. Daniel was cast into the lion's den. According to the mutilated protocol of earth, lions now devour men as food. But when Daniel entered the lion's den, because he came with an atmosphere of Eden, the lion became pests. Because when the new Jerusalem is restored, the lion will eat grass with the, with the sheep. They restore creation. Men of prayer are the source of the earth. Any believer who doesn't pray, that portion of prophecy does not include him. You may think it's something you will argue. You cannot manipulate the powers of creation unless you look deep with the truths that make me the powers that be. Daniel in Babylon, everybody had fallen because they were manipulated by a prince of Persia. Only Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were standing. 
The Bible said in Daniel chapter 6 from verse 10 that every day he prayed three times as his custom was. Yeah. The reason Israel had hope of coming out of Babylon was because there was a sort in that personality called Daniel. Every time his incense rose to heaven, he gave God authority to manipulate creation again. Because spirits cannot intervene in the affairs of creation unless human entities partner with them. That's why they wanted to destroy Jericho. The angel of the Lord had come. His sword was drawn out, but he could not do anything. The word of the Lord had already been given. He could not do anything. Until the intercessor was moving around and surveying the land. And he saw the angel of the Lord. And the guy said, no, I didn't come for you. I came according to the word of the Lord, but there's no human partnership. The moment Joshua partnered with him, the powers of heaven began to move. And he got the strategy to destroy Jericho. Jericho sank because a man knew how reserved the heritage of God on the earth. The reason it looks as if darkness is growing is because there are no waiters anymore. The intercessors, the number of intercessors are depleting. The earth is losing potency because the number of intercessors are depleting. Meanwhile, sorcerers are increasing every day. Every day they are increasing. But the intercessor, we have many preachers. They gather three messages from the best preachers and they coin out their own message and they come to preach. But they cannot touch any throne in the territory. Only men of prayer can move the principality so that the heavens can open. The sons of the earth are the waiters with the throne of God. The whole Gentile community was doomed, even though the cross paid for the Gentiles. There was no access point for God to reach the Gentiles, but a sort appeared, and he said, God, let us, your prayers and your arms giving have risen up to heaven as a memorial. On account of that, salvation came. There is no preservation for the earth unless men prayer lies again. Prayer is deeper than asking God for bread and wine. It's a strategy of God for keeping his purpose within the borderline of human existence so that that which is in heaven can become that which is obtainable on the earth. That's why when Jesus prayed, he said, I will be done in heaven as it is on the earth. Prayer is the conduit that downloads heavenly dimensions to the earth. Right? Every time we pray to pray, we give up the earth for manipulation of the heights of the heavens by principalities and powers. The reason heaven can always be seen on earth is because intercessors are standing. One intercessor was superior to all the preachers in Colossus. He said in Colossians 4 12, Epaphras is one of you. He's like the pastors, he's like the preachers. But the goal, the job description of Epaphras is such that he hides somewhere at the back of the cave. And he ensures that everyone in Kolos stands. So the reason the preaching is working is because Epaphras is one of you, a born servant of Christ, laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Prayer is superior to preaching. The reason men church of Kolos was because Epaphras was praying. Paul said, My little children. Of whom I travail again in prayers until Christ be formed. So Paul knew that the reason his gospel was put in was because prayer was the molecule of his gospel. So he formed Christ in the heart of the people before he went to speak to them. But now we carry concordance and we gather exe- a scriptures until we form exegetical outlay and then we come to talk English. No prayer. No prayer. When the apostles waited and parried, as they stepped out, Peter came and just told them the story of what they themselves did and they were pricked in their hearts. The sons of the earth are the men of prayer. You don't have prayer, you limit God in your life. You don't have prayer, you limit God in your family. You don't have prayer, you limit God in your, in your world. I tell people all the time, the reason I'm preaching is because I love God. I discovered God later and began to love Him. But the reason I'm preaching is because I was sentenced to the microphone by the prayers of my mother. 
Before I made the decision, she chose it for me. Oh, you know the Bible says, Levi paid tithes in the knowledge of Abraham. So Abraham had authority to determine the direction that he may go. I was compelled to do it. I was sentenced to this microphone. For many years, I walk on the street. I say, I will never preach the gospel. But my mother had covenanted. So it was difficult. I struggled. The more I struggled, the more I came close. I held this thing and it will never go into my hand. Why? Prayer. Prayer. The Bible said in Revelation 5 8, He said, The prayers of the saints are sent to heaven as waters and they are stored in golden fires. So every time God wants to spend on earth, He fetches from the prayer of the intercessors. They are the source of the earth. A robbery can be going on now at the end of the town. The angels don't have right to move because the earth God has given to the sons of men. But because Philip Cephas stood on the mountain five weeks ago and said, let the land be preserved. That prayer had gone to heaven as autumn and it has been stored in golden fires. He was not praying for God, give me a car. He kept the land and the integrity of the borders of this realm in order. So because of that economy of prayer, God can fetch from the prayers of Philip Sefer and mobilize angels to bring intervention. You may not know, but when we get to heaven and you think the preachers are the mightiest of men, then you will see great men that the Bible is that the earth is not worthy for their names to be called. Those ones, they were locked up at the back sides of the mountain. Their duty was to raise incense to heaven. To raise incense. So any generation that has hope with God is because prayers are stored up in heaven in golden fires by the intercessors that we deny themselves with. Samuel said, I will not sin against God by not praying for you. He preserved the integrity of Israel by his prayer. And the Bible says in the days of Samuel, the hand of God was perpetually against the Philistine. Perpetually. The prayer of Samuel was as potent as the power of a garrison. The guy alone as an intercessor was more potent than an army. Because men of prayer are the sort of the earth. The reason Satan comes to manipulate your family is because your altar is dead. Your altar is dead. The day you put fire on that altar, a new government is set in place. That is when you become the salt of your family. You may be there and say, I'm a believer. Nothing will happen here. Every three years, a hawk will come and pick somebody. You are not a salt until your altar come alive. That is when before anything happens. When they come, then they discover that a gatekeeper is standing. A flaming sword will be moving like this. The guy tries to come as usual and he goes with him to this. Because a man of prayer has risen. I thought it was enough to be a believer. People were dying in my family. Until God came and began to teach me the way of priesthood. The of priesthood. Sometimes I pray with my money. I pray with <laughs> you. don't know what prayer is. Did I wait upon the Lord? There is no man of God. I doubt if there is any prominent man of God in this country that have not so seen to. Not because I need something. I plug into their covenants. I plug into their sacrifices. I plug into their labors. So things work for me. If you check me in the spirit realm, you will not you will be amazed how I'm doing. You don't know the covenants that back me up. There are mysteries, mysteries concocted by prayer and acts of priesthood. They that wait upon the Lord. A point will come when every time they invoke the name of the family, fire will appear. Because it is your altar that we speak. Your altar. Every time they call the neighbor's family, they see an altar. They see an altar. Because you have become a deity. They that wait upon the Lord. They renew their strength. They mount up with wings like the eagles. We have too many talkers. We know how to talk to men, but we don't know how to talk to spirits. The sorts of the earth. Where are they? There are more believers in this world now than there has ever been. Why is darkness growing? Because there are less intercessors. The percentage of intercessors are going down. And in case you don't know, the place where the greatest warfare in the church is, is in the camp of the intercessors. The devil will choose to bring one intercessor down 
that will bring down temperatures. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4 3, he said, If our gospel be healed, it is he to them that are lost, whom the God of this world have blinded. So even while we are preaching the gospel, it's possible for the God of this world to still blind the heart of a man. Meanwhile, before Paul made that utterance, in verse 2 of that scripture, Paul gave the criteria of a preacher. This is not somebody who just stepped out to go and preach because he heard a story. He said, We have not handled the word of God with craftiness and deceit. Our conscience is pure before all men. So he has satisfied the requirement of an agriculture. Yet, he said, It's possible for our gospel to be healed because the God of this world can black the heart of a man. The only time when you can pierce through that dark cloud is when you bring the sword of prayer. Because when you begin to pray, you can move and immobilize the God of this world. That was why he didn't bother himself to preach to the Israelites. He knew the challenge in Babylon. He went to his knees. And after 21 days, the prince of Persia moved. At that point, anything you say, the people will hear. There will be darkness in your family. And if you don't if you don't if you don't cop it, even yourself darkness will overtake you. The only way we become souls of the earth is by stirring the fire of the altar. That's why he said in Leviticus 6 12, he said the fire of the altar must not be put out. The priest must put it on it every morning. It's an everyday enterprise. Prayer is not an act, it's a life. It's a move of the spirit. And when that move is dead in the heart of a man, that man begins to do business in the heavens. The reason everything you know about God you are told is because you have not traveled beyond time. The pathway beyond time is the pathway of prayer. When you pray, a point comes when you leave the clouds of earth and you enter into the assembly of the immortals. And then you will see where the destinies of men are fabricated. You will see where the prophecies about nations are spoken. So before you enter a land, you know the powers that be. You know what to utter. You know the gospel that has planned for you. You are not coming to preach because you are a student of a preacher in the U.S. You have traveled to heaven. You know the spirit that rules that land. And you know the gospel that can enter the heart of those people. That's why we all have different messages. Because we come from different locations of the spirit. We are sent to different locations in time. But men have no understanding. Prayer is lacking. This is why we are weak. We don't know how to renew our strength. We are weak. The guy finished preaching and then the next thing he falls on the lap of a woman. We are weak. We talk from our brain. And the more we talk, the more we become weak. Meanwhile, the elders of old, they will sit down for three months and they are explaining the scripture and praying. The more they do, the more they figure it. What do they know? Moses will climb the mountain and he's there for 40 days and 40 nights. And when he came down, you thought he was running down to it. And then he came down, he saw the children of Israel in iniquity, he broke the, the, the covenant, and then he went up his face flat and he was there for another 40 days and 40 nights. Is that a man? He knows something you don't know. They that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. You want to walk like a spirit on earth. The key is waiting. I know the power of the word of God. I am a student of the world. But it is the good of the world. This is why we travel into the spirit. Else we will become theologians. There are many Muslim theologians that are by the scholars. They don't believe in Jesus. They know the Bible more than you. But they have no revelation into light. They can't touch the life of God. They that wait upon the Lord. Sometimes, as you begin to pray, then you come into a clan. See, you don't know that prayer itself is an adventure. I have met many generals in the spirit. Some of them died before I was born. Some of them you meet them before you come back and study about them on Wikipedia. <laughs> you don't know the advantages that we have in the spirit. I was telling them in Abuja yesterday. I may be here. I may never have met with Wigglesworth. 
but I'm going for a healing meeting and I pray to a point where God brings me to where we meet this work of prayer. Then as I go to that meeting, the dimension that God will begin to speak for me. I don't have his mantle, but I stood where he stands in the spirit. And then I begin to operate like we were I can come for a meeting today and you see me floating like a Pastor of your I enter where he was standing in the spirit. So when I come out, that dimension come out with me. So you can be many people in one lifetime because you journeyed into the womb of prayer. They see you, they see your boy. This guy is a son. You don't know him. He doesn't know you. But in the spirit, you are in a clan. You are in a clan. And in that clan, when you check that assembly, you may find Paul. You may find Watchman Lee. You may find Apostle Warum side. Then you stood there behind them. Because you were entered by prayer. So when you open your mouth to begin to talk, you open scriptures and wisdom flows through you. Because by prayer, you joined an assembly in heaven. You came into a clan. So when you talk, you talk with the spirit that was upon Paul. The life of Watchman Lee breaks out of you. And the wisdom of Arum Yosai breaks through your vocal cords. And people marvel. They say, where did he study this thing? If you want to study like that in time, you may begin to talk at 90. But by prayer, you enter into the foundation of that wisdom. And when you speak, you speak wisdom. You speak wisdom because you came into an assembly. You may enter the spirit and then you enter somewhere. And then you saw, hey, you saw Alexander Dovi, you saw Rupert Eta, you saw Katrin Kuma, you saw Benihi, you saw Christo Yakilome, and then you found yourself. And then when you came out, you do like this, people are healed, cancers disappear. You didn't receive their mantle, you entered their clan in the spirit. It's a possibility. You that people say you are a nobody, you were praying, and suddenly you saw Katrin Kuma. And when you came out, you came out with her image. So God can give you the strength of a monarch, of a patriarch that have gone to heaven 50 years before you were born. He said in Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 4, he said, at the ear of the mountain, he said, dwells the mantles of many warriors. Their mantles, when they leave this world, they leave their mantles behind in the spirit. But men of prayer are the only ones that can travel there. There's a place in the spirit where I can enter. So when it comes among men, he can travel through space. He's so even the devil will look at you and will be wonder who is this? Because the Bible said in Moses in the state, he said to reveal the manifold wisdom of God to principalities and powers. Instead of you surprised at the wickedness of darkness, you can come with wisdom and mystery that even Satan will be marveled. Who is this? Because when you come, what he doesn't know is that you are coming with the strength of a clan. The same with Wiggles word that defeat 70 days ago. He does with Wiggles was are gone, so we will rest. But by prayer, you enter the place that time has no value. So you came back with Wiggles word. And the devil is wanting. I thought with Wiggles word is dead. No, he's dead, but his reality is in the spirit. And I crystallized it by prayer. <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord. They say the altar in your family have lasted for 500 years. They don't know the technology of prayer. By prayer, you can enter into the place where Moses himself stood. And then when you come, the same way Moses judged Pharaoh and God came down in Exodus 12, 12 to judge the cause of Egypt, you may come back like the Moses of your day. And then the same power will hit the foundation of your family because you journeyed into the spirit and you enter the clan of Moses. They that wait upon the Lord. This is why God doesn't waste spiritual resources. Because the spirit realm is pregnant with spiritual possibilities. But men don't travel there. If you begin to explore the spirit realm, you will become a wonder among men. They that wait. I don't struggle for mantles. I don't waste my time with anything. If God finds me faithful and trusts the man to thank God, I'm hopeful to reach but there are too many possibilities available to me. If only I can pray. That's why Jesus came and said, Men ought to pray. Men ought. Men ought. 
Then ought you that is crying, God help me, God help me. You don't know that in the spirit you were standing behind Deborah. If only you knew that you are the Deborah of your generation. A woman that can go to war and then the stars fighting from their causes. How did she sustain so much power that the stars will support her in battle? And then that same woman is very optional. We think prayer is not a key in prayer. Now, one that's the last, the least thing prayer can do for you. Prayer can literally make you become like God. They that wait upon the Lord, they mount up with wings like the eagles. Like the eagles, you can soar into heights in Zion, and then your eyes can see deep matters that cannot be isolated by human wisdom. Because by prayer, you enter, you enter. You enter. That's where a man will be coming down from the mountain and his face will shine like the sun. What Moses entered into when he came down from that mountain was a reality that was in the future. Because only Jesus was a being that should be transfigured. Because in this mortal body, it was Jesus that had the power to wear the garment of heaven. For Moses entered into the spirit. And he touched the reality of Jesus. That's why he said, A prophet like God will be not sent to him. By prayer, he had entered into the future. And he experienced what transfiguration looks like. But when he was coming down from the mountain, the Bible said, He said, He knew nothing. He said, He whispered that his face shone like the sun. He was not aware, but he had touched something. So at some point, you don't even know. They tell you there's a problem in this family. You say there cannot be any problem. And because you said that, everything will run away. Because you are talking from a plane of authority. A plane. That thing alone can make you become a God. You know when God came to the garden, he didn't bother that Adam was seen. He said, where are thou? Because you are not the eyes you have seen. You have lost your place of authority. May God help us to stand. Hey! To help us, may God help us to stand. You don't know who you are. I tell you the truth. Your certificates have put a value on you. Men have put a value on you. Your parents have put a value on you. They, don't. they thought John the Baptist would become like a priest so that he would walk after his father Zacharias. <laughs> but the guy went into the wilderness. He said, No, no, no. What my spirit is telling me, I can't see it in my father. What my spirit is telling me, I looked at the Sanhedrin, nobody, I can't see it. And the only way to find it was to wander into the wilderness because he needed to find the heavens. And as he was checking, he was checking, he was checking. He now stumbled on the voice of Isaiah the prophet. 700 years before he was born, he said, The voice will cry in the wilderness. And then he found himself, he said, This way. That dimension was not in the Sanhedrin because that prophecy had lasted 700 years before his time. The only way he could isolate that dimension was to travel back into the spirit where that prophecy came from. And when he then had the archive of heaven, that prophecy had his name written in it. And then he came the same way. He said, I am the voice of one kind in the wilderness. You don't know who you are until you do business in the waters. Prayer is the way. The source of the earth and the end of prayer. You want your family to receive salvation. The king's prayer. You will pray for 30 years and you will make a book here. And if you are not careful, you will even lose your own faith. You want to deal with them, first of all, arrest the throne that rules that family. I didn't preach to anybody in my family. Today, all of them are born again. Two years ago, I came to my father's sister. The only devotion, all of you stand up. Give your life to Christ now. This is what you do. Believe that he died and he rose for your sins. Do you believe it? Say yes. Now you will confess. If you believe, then confess. They now confess. The whole family. I call any of them now, sir. Apostle, sir. Sir, sir. I am second to the last one. But there is an opportunity in the spirit. If you enter by prayer, you will do. You will do. The same man that was killing people in my family. Three 
nine months ago, he struck my dad. He said he's prostrate. Prostrate to something, something. I said, that's what the doctors are saying. We will be born, check everything. And in the midnight, I rode with my friend and went to bed. And then, before a vision, where the man stood again and said, you will deal with the man. While he was seeing that vision, me, I saw an angel came into the room. And the angel was clothed with the sun. And I knew it was just, but I didn't know what to judge. So when we began to check, how far? He, he told me what, he, I said, okay, now I know why I saw what I saw. He released judgment. The man went down after three days. He was in his house. He's dead. Okay. And two months later, he didn't just die. He confessed with his mouth that he killed my other brother three years before. Meanwhile, I was still an apostle. But I did not be passionate. So my brother's life was in my hand. But I lost him. So it's not the devil that took him. I lost him. He judged. He confessed with his mouth. Decayed. And he died. Because... Gatekeepers are sleeping. Warriors are lying down in the day of battle. We don't know our advantage. They that wait. Today, before anything happens, I see it in the spirit. And if I don't wait, it doesn't happen. In the natural man, in this world, in the spirit of the king. You don't know who you are. You say you are the soul. You are the light of the world. A city set upon the heat that cannot be hid. But how do you ascend the mountains of God when you are sleeping every day? It's not enough to read the Bible. The difference the difference of the truth. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. It's time for you to focus and talk to heaven. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. You don't know who you are. You think you are a student in Federal University of Latvia. You are deceived. I came to tell you that you are a prophet. I came to tell you that you are a ruler among men. I came to tell you that you are an ambassador of heaven. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. You know, we finish the business of power before I preach so that we will pray. You need to discover who you are in the spirit. Moses found out who he was. When he journeyed to the backside of the desert and he came to Horeb, the mountain of God, you will travel until you find who you are. You will find who you are and you will carry the atmosphere of where you come from in order to rule in this realm. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. We have to pray now. I have been able to isolate three things this morning. The first is that you receive the strength of God when you wait. The second is that you become the salt of the earth when you wait. And the third is that you find who you are and you connect with your clan when you pray. That's when you can rule in this world. Else the thrones in darkness will manipulate your destiny. You can be a prophet sent from heaven, but you will be a harlot among men. The Bible said there was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
The only reason John was a man sent from God in time was because he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth. Many who are harlots and dressing in bomb shot today, if you check them out in heaven, they are prophets. Many masturbators on earth today, if you check them out in heaven, they are apostles. But they came to earth and the thrones in darkness altered the patterns and the dictates of ordination concerning their lives. That's why when God sees a man, he doesn't address him by who he is on earth. He addresses him by his statue in heaven. He came to Gideon. He said, go in this thy might. A warrior in heaven was a fearful puppet on earth. He said, go in this thy might. Thou mighty man of valor. A mighty man of valor can be a fearful man on earth. Unless he knows how to migrate from earth to the heights of the heavens. Ah! How pathetic that a seer, a seer can become a fornicator on earth. Meanwhile, he is supposed to be the one that tells us the things that happen in heaven when we see manifestations on earth. The decipherer of the breaking of scrolls in heaven is on earth a harlot. Because we don't know the powers of waiting. The powers of waiting. The powers of waiting. They are spiritual fire. 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 Intercessors, intercessors, it's your time. It's your time. Don't be a spectator. Don't be a spectator. Lift your hands and focus on the Lord. The Lord wants to anoint intercessors that will keep government over the land. Government, government. There are some of you that the Holy Ghost is already talking to your heart. Come and join them with Intercessors over the land. It's a time of your coronation. This is a moment in the spirit. If this window closes, I'm done. God invites intercessors over this city. Intercessors. Come, come, come. I'm looking for people that will donate one hour of prayer every day so long as you are on this land. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. Ordinations. Ordinations. Ordination. Sarabasabina Tarakai. The prayers you have been praying here every day, do you believe in it? The fellowship you come from, the fellowship of the brethren, do you really believe in the power of the fellowship? The things you say about God, do you know them? Do you believe them? You have used the name of Jesus all your life. Do you really believe in the name of Jesus? Can you call on the name of Jesus and then shut down every plan B because you believe? Because the Bible said, Thou believest that there is only one God. He said, Thou doest well. However, I said, even the devil believes and he trembles. His own believing is deeper. He has a deeper dimension than your own believing. He said, He doesn't just believe. He said he believes to the point where he trembles. He said, but what substantiates your belief? What gives difference to your own kind of belief is that your belief is backed up with corresponding action. You call on the name of Jesus. Have you called on the name of Jesus on any circumstance and you shut down every plan B? Or you are calling it so that it will be recorded that you also called upon it? Or you are still calling it to find out whether it will work or not? 
when you go to pray, do you really have peace? And because you have prayed, you shut down and leave it for God. You see, we don't come to a point where we tell ourselves the truth. That's why we are still embarking on all kinds of religion. Somebody goes to a man of God, he prays for him. He rushes to another one, he prays. He rushes to another one, he prays. He says, but they that believe will not make haste. The cure is simple. The cure is one. What will make your prayer make sense? What will make your understanding of the world make sense? What will make every activity you carry out in the body of Christ make sense? Is captured in one context. It's called alignment. It is in alignment that the Holy Ghost takes over as the teacher of your life. Because the journey of alignment begins when you submit your will to the will of God. The journey of alignment is the greatest risk anybody takes in time. It is called walking on the water. It is a point where you excuse your intelligence, your cerebral abilities. It's a point where you excuse your connections and everything you have. It's a point where you excuse all the chances and the advantages you have and you say, let that will be done. It is in alignment that we are trained. The syllables of the spirit, they are captured within the context of alignment. If you have not come to that point where you journey through the path of alignment, you will be a talker and you will talk a lot of things. You will even inspire people. But mind you, that you are talking and people are falling does not mean anything is happening. Because I know men in the world who don't even talk but people are slain. I know of Michael Jackson. He comes an auditorium and people are slain in their hundreds. Because when an overwhelming expectation collides all of a sudden with manifestation, your senses crack. That you are talking and people are screaming does not mean you have gotten there. Because the man that enters and journeys into God and apprehends him, he knows. I was sharing with them in Zaria last week. I said we talk about atmosphere so much that atmosphere has even become more important than the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, I saw Moses stood before three million people and they were hurling insults at him. And there was no atmosphere that suggested the move of the spirit. But Moses looked up to heaven. And God said, go forward. And he stretched forth his rod, rod and the sea parted. Miracles happening when the atmosphere does not even permit. Because he knows. He knows something you don't know. I saw Elijah stood before a king that threatened his very existence. Do you know what it means to stand before Buhari now and tell him that unless by my word it will not rain because of your evil and tell him that you can't journey out of this land because of your evil and it doesn't happen until Buhari locates you. Do you know where Buhari found him? Ahab found him in Horeb, the mount of God. That was not in the city. A king, they will say, Somebody made a proclamation in Makodi and Buhari will journey for Abuja looking for you. It doesn't matter if you are in Jatoka. He will go there to find you because he knows the keys of heaven is in your hand. You say it shall not rain. There shall be no rain or dew except by my word. That is not utterance that is categorized as speech power. That is a man locking heaven by words. It's not deriving so much pleasure with oratorial dexterity. It's somebody talking and the elements of creation obey by power. <laughs> we don't believe what we say. And that's because the protocol of alignment is not complete. I also discovered that it doesn't matter who lays hands on you. It will remain in your heart as a seed that will never manifest. You can pride yourself in talking it. And this one I'm telling you, I'm a, I, I, I'm, I am a first-hand example of it. A down on me is not about laying on of hands. You have to fan to flame. You have to align or see the seed begins to germinate because alignment brings you under the atmosphere of glory where the realities of God are given expression. If I tell you the people that have imparted me, you'll be amazed. 
If it's by impartation, I won't be here. I would have been touring the whole nations because Benihim has imparted me one on one. Pastor Chris Yakilo may have imparted me. Dr. Paul and Nature have anointed me. Bishop Oedepo have imparted me. Randy Clark have imparted me. Todd White have imparted me. It's not about impartation. It's the extent to which submit yourself for that which is putting you to grow. We have journeyed to places, slept on crusade ground to motivate our ego. We come back and tell people I've been here, I've been here. And at the end of the day, we even take the glory in mundane things. Because we want to tell people, I also slept on the crusade ground so that you know our passion. You know our zeal for Jesus. And it ends there. When you come to understanding, you will know the things that matter. Your orientation will be in one direction, the Holy Ghost. You become most disadvantaged when you take pride in spiritual things. Because spiritual things are expected to to remove everything that is self from you so that everything that is God will be parted. But we are blocked out of spiritual realities because of our pride. I'm the man of prayer. I'm the fasting machine. <laughs> you say holy men of God speak as they were carried. They understood it experientially. So it doesn't matter even if death but standing face to face. You ask Jesus to help you tonight. Because we need help. I tell you the truth. We need help. We need help. We need help. We are a generation that need help. Death has never been seen as bogus the way it has seen in our generation. We need help. Pride, arrogance. When we have not seen anything, we have not even. And you ask Jesus to help you. We are so proud that we come for meeting and we decide what should happen. And as far as that thing doesn't happen, we don't ma- it doesn't matter what God is saying. We write it off. <laughs> we need help. Thank you, Father. Thank you, precious Jesus. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Let's look at scriptures for a few minutes. For a few minutes. Take me deeper, deeper in love with you. You can sit down. Just allow yourself to be anointed. Jesus, hold me close in your embrace. Take me deeper, deeper than I've ever been before. I just want to love you more and more. How I love you. To be deeper in love. Take me deeper. Deeper in love with you. With you. Jesus, hold me close in your embrace. Take me deeper. Deeper than I've ever been before. I just want to love you more and more. I want to love to be deeper in love. You see, God created the man. And he put the man in creation. And he said, let the man have dominion. Why does the man need dominion? Because part of the blessings that God gave to the man was for him. 
to have authority and rulership over every other creation. Why then does this man still need dominion? I began to wonder. Then it dawned on me that the realities that were captured within the sphere of Eden were not found in the outer part of Eden. And God had every of us in mind when he began creation. And there was no way all of us could be in Eden. So the man, was, the man needed to expand all of the realities that were in Eden, the glories of Eden, to every other aspect or every other part of the earth realm. And he said, have dominion. Now, at this point, Satan was not yet in charge of the operation of the earth realm. The earth was not yet cracked. Man was not yet falling. A man needed authority, power, dominion in order to bet the things that God had in his heart. And then, as time progressed, the man decided to yield to Satan. And Satan came into the world and destroyed the protocol of creation and became the God of the system. Now, between that time and now, when does man need more dominion? When the earth was not yet falling, man was not yet falling, God said, have dominion. Between that time, comparing that time with now, that earth is already cracked. Earth is already under the authority of the devil. When do you think man needs more dominion? If you look upon this question, you will discover that there is nothing we need now as much as dominion. Because everything that is within the visible creation is fighting our existence. Everything. Including the mosquito itself. Compound that you swept and kept suddenly as begins to grow. Everything tries to choke out of it. So in order to succeed in this realm, I'm going to be very calm this evening so that I can leave you with some tangible points that you go home with to practice. I've discovered that we say a lot of things under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and people don't even understand. Thank you, you may be seated. God bless you. People don't even understand half of what we are saying. And most times because they are very, very inspiring and novel statements, their emotion is hijacked in the process. They are slain, they are shouting, screaming everywhere. But at the end of the day, when you check back after many months, there have not been any tangible change. So especially when I'm in the house, I decide to show a few principles so that we can practice. I'm also practicing them. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron as a man, the countenance of his friend. Apostle told us, he said, practice is superior to learning. And until you practice any, until you practice a reality, you don't know it. Because when you practice it, conviction is furnished. And when conviction is furnished, you can see manifestation. Are we together? So I'll be very calm to explain a few precepts. You see, man is in need of dominion. And redemption does not automatically give man dominion. Redemption restored man to the position he was falling from and gives him access to everything he had access to before he was falling. So after you are redeemed, it becomes your responsibility to take advantage of everything you have been given in God in order to exercise dominion. But the unfortunate thing is this. Before man was falling, he had access to the spirit realm. You see, the Bible said God told Adam to name all the animals. And the names that Adam gave to the animals were the names that were. So, even without consulting with God, Adam had right and access into the archives of the spirit to find out the things that were there before the foundations of the world. So, he picked from them and said the exact things God would have said if he was the one. 
That is because his soul was not falling. But the unfortunate thing now is that all we have for dominion, all we have for the exercise of dominion is locked up in the spirit. And your soul is now falling. And redemption did nothing about your soul. Just as it did nothing about your body. Everything redemption took care of was in your spirit. God now left you the resources to develop your soul and to plug into him. That is the summary of faith. Your ability to take advantage of the things that are provided for you to hijack the falling soul to a level where it can operate at the frequency of the spirit. So you are different from Adam. Because Adam's soul had direct access to the spirit, your own soul is separated from the spirit. So there are a lot of integers you must put in place in order to take advantage of all that you have, which is now unfortunately locked up in the spirit. The scriptures give us a picture of what should be. So that by then, we will have a different kind of syllabus and a different kind of training to give us a new orientation as to what our reality should be. Because without the scriptures, it is possible for you to begin to judge yourself based on circumstantial manifestations. So the scriptures gives you understanding of the things that should be. And beyond that, it also gives you the strategies on how to take advantage of what you have with God to change existential realities to conform with what God has written concerning you. So every time you engage the spirit, it is a very conscious act with a targeted objective of recalibrating everything that is captured within the sphere of the fallen creation to align back with that which God wrote concerning you before the world was falling. And that is why your walk in the spirit is not a religious activity. It's not a soulish activity. It is a tangible reality you must apprehend in order to alter the negative protocol of oppressions that are around your life. But if you don't consciously engage these things, you may come to a point where you will do what others are doing and you will not have the results of the Bible. And you will keep consoling yourself and motivating yourself thinking you are being humble before God Whereas that is not the plan of God for you. In fact, if you are not even sufficiently educated by the Holy Ghost through the scriptures, you may think where you are is the best of God for you. Meanwhile, you are far below what God expects of you. And a lot of persons may not see this until they show up in heaven. Then God begins to show them, well, this is the city and the city you were supposed to take over. These are the dead men you were supposed to raise. But since you couldn't, I now decided to send Reverend George. Because you couldn't summon enough faith. May God help me not to see that in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the moment the creation was falling, the devil became the architect of creation. So what the circumstances reveal to you are contrary to your reality. What the institutions of the world reveal to you, they are contrary to your reality. You can just wake up the next thing you see hospitals everywhere. You see doctors walking very modestly with, with comportment, with gallantry. And then they tell you, yeah, they are the ones that handle sick people. And hospitals are where they take sick people to. Yeah, cover yourself because mosquito will give you malaria. You, these things bombard you until by the time you are growing up, it's natural for you to think that we are supposed to fall sick from time to time. And then suddenly you open the scripture and he said, let no one in Zion say I'm sick. Now the question is, is it that those in Zion should lie or try to refuse reality? Or is it that what they are saying in Zion is just for talking sake? Because you can hear it and then pick it and begin to talk it because you think it's for talking. Meanwhile, the scripture is trying to give you another educational system of what should be. Because God is aware that every other thing around you will orient you negatively. And if you follow that kind of educational system, you will depart from your reality until a point comes where you are a direct opposite of everything that you should be. Hallelujah. They tell you, well, um, there are demons everywhere and uh, you see, our fathers, they did it like this. If you don't do it like this, you will die. And even if you don't die, it will affect your children 
and your children's children. So even when the guy gives his heart to Christ, uh, when it comes to village things, he says, no, this thing we have to, you know, if you don't do it like this, there's a challenge. We have to do it like this. Because he has been educated by another syllabus. So the Holy Scriptures were given to reorient your mind. So that your journey in the spirit can begin from there. But the unfortunate thing is that everything the scriptures is revealing to you, you don't have it the way it is saying it until yourself is brought into the realm from where the scriptures were crystallized. Because what the scripture is showing you is a reality that is hooked up in another realm. So when you see it, there is supposed to be a hunger on your inside to journey into that realm where these realities are domesticated. So that when you apprehend it, you now have the authority to enact it on earth. And that's why the Bible said in Romans chapter 15 verse 4, it said the things that were written aforetime, he said they were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11, he said what happened to them happened to them as an example. And it is written for our exhortation. The word is admonition. But it is exotizo. It is written for your exhortation. It is written to inspire you into that same reality. So it's written unto us for our admonition, unto whom the end of the world is come. So everything that was written and everything that happened to the people in the time of old is to reveal to you that these possibilities are available. So it's not enough for you to begin to say the things they said by the Holy Spirit. You must have to find out how they said what they said. And you will do what they do to get into where they were to say what they said before you can have what they have. But the unfortunate thing, we take what they say, we run with it, we say it, and we don't have result. And because we don't know that we are actually being on the disadvantaged side, we think we are pleasing God by staying there in a humble fashion. So you see us begin to give negative interpretation to what alignment is. And some people now think alignment is suffering. God buffeting you until you are a nobody. Hallelujah. You can carry the whole scriptures and quote it. But these guys who were saying these things, they were saying it because they were carried into a place. And they spoke from there. So he said what happened to them was an example. So what you do as a student in the school of the spirit is to find out when these guys pray, how did they pray? And when they pray, what is their focus? What is their motivation? And when they are done praying, what is their result? So if prayer is what the Holy Ghost is furnishing in your heart, you check the scriptures to find out how the expedition of prayer was carried out. What was done in the time of prayer and the results that they apprehended after praying. So when you begin your own praying, your goal now becomes different. But because we are not sufficiently educated, when people pray, that is when you see the highest manifestation of carnality. Because it's possible for the brother who was in the prayer meeting and not praying to carry the mic and all of a sudden become, become a trumpet. It is possible for the brother who somebody else was praying and he sat down crossing his leg to carry the mic and be jumping up and down. So he doesn't understand that even while he was sitting, his objective was not different from when he was carrying the microphone. Because if he was not joining when he was sitting, he would not suddenly start joining when he's standing. His objectives are different. You see why we do a lot of activities but there are no results. Because we don't travel anywhere. A brother comes to tell you, yeah, he's going for a retreat. He's going for a retreat. It has everybody in the world. Meanwhile, there's no energy in his spirit for that retreat. That retreat, he went for his slept throughout and came back. Instead of asking God, help me, I need a retreat. He's going telling everybody I'm going for a retreat. Our orientations are distorted. If I know I have a retreat and then there's no body in my heart for retreat, I will begin to plead with the Lord, help me, help me. I need to pray now. I know something is coming. I know you are tearing prayer in my spirit, but there's no energy. That's what Apostle told us. He said, when they pray, they say, quicken us, oh God, that we might call upon your name. Because to them, praying is to hook up to God. So the brother is in the room, he prays, 
And then suddenly, every other person is on land. He is in cloud nine. So as he comes out from the place of prayer, his disposition changes. Everything about him changes. Because when he went to the place of prayer, he was in the realm of glory. Meanwhile, this man that prayed came out and nothing was altered in the earth realm. This man that prayed came out and nothing was changed around the circumstances he was interceding for. They didn't pray like that. How did they pray in the Bible? You will check it. And then you begin to practice. The moment these things become real to you, you will begin to notice steady progress with God. So when you come for a prayer meeting and they are praying, you will focus on Jesus. You will focus on the Holy Spirit. And then suddenly you begin to find grace apprehend you. People pray for six months, but they don't still tap into the grace of prayer. That means all the activities you were doing was in the flesh. Because if you press into God, a time comes when he lifts you up. If you press into God, a time comes when he begins to carry you from place to place. John said I was in the spirit on the last day. And then the first thing that happened is that he heard the voice. And as he turned, God brought him into another phase of his ordination. He began to see mysteries. And Jesus began to teach him mysteries. And he was at that level. Still focused, walking with Jesus. And then another voice came. A door opened in heaven. He said, come up here. This time around, he was not seen again. He was carried into it. He was moving from place to place in God. But we do our own, and then we move from place to place in man. When we come to a gathering like this, the Bible said, Behold, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in harmony. It's like, it's like the oil dripping from the head of Aaron down to, through his beard, onto his skirt. He said, It's like the dew upon Mount Hermon. He said, There, there, the Lord commanded his blessings. If you know that a gathering like this is a place where the blessing of God is domiciled, ah, even your heart posture will change. You wonder why people will leave their house every day from Monday to Wednesday and they come to prayer meeting and that's when they are gisting. They come to prayer meeting. That's when they are sleeping. Then why not sleep at home? That you leave your house every day for two months and come to a place like this and nothing change, you should weep. What is happening? That means time has no value to you in the first place. You come to a prayer meeting for three months and nothing has shifted. The lost you were battling with, you are still battling with them. The weaknesses are still there and there is no proof that a layer of grace has been imparted onto you. And then you, ah, we, we are men of prayer. We are people of prayer. We are a community of prayer. You sing it everywhere. No, ah, we, 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 where we go is prayer. No, it's prayer. We prayer. We prayer. You become a trumpet of prayer. But what is the goal of prayer? What is the objective of the gathering? Do you even know it? Have you sensed it before? Have you touched the body? You see people praying as if they want to die. Sometimes I see people like Reverend George here, when they are done praying, their clothes is wet up to their trousers, and I say, Jesus, where did this energy come from? Oh, will carry back here. The whole building is... I say, what kind of grace is this? He looks at me and say, I'm pastor. Sometimes I come, when they are going home, I will squeeze money, put in his hand and run away. I say, I connect, I connect. I, I can't imagine. How, how did he tap into such dimensions of prayer? And I was here before him. <laughs> See, conscious thing. It's a conscious thing. What you plug to you enter. We were in Lagos with Benihim. And he said, if a man enters into the realm, he said the realm comes out with him. <laughs> See, you don't, need, you don't need to act it. See, if you enter into the realm, it, the realm will attach itself to you. The Bible said, Moses wished not that his face shone like the sun. You see, Moses doesn't need to come and tell you, I've been praying for 40 days. He doesn't need to come out and make you feel as if, this prayer this time has affected him this prayer the body 
as he was coming, his face was glory. The things he was offering is a proof that he ascended from the earth realm. It was that same mountain where Moses went to pray that he looked into the foundation of the world. He began to tell us things that happened when no man was on the face of the earth. He said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How can a man talk like that? Where were you in the beginning? Where was God standing? He journeyed through the portals of prayer and he entered the place where no human being had been given access before him. By prayer. He said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. A man giving a narrative of the things that happened when only the divine was present. By prayer. It was from that mountain that Moses descended from. And he said, let Reuben live. It doesn't matter. The man that caused Reuben was a patriarch. This is a man that speaks and heaven obeys it. I told them, Jacob placed his hand upon Manasseh and Ephraim. And he said, let the name of Israel be named upon you. Instantly, Manasseh and Ephraim became part of the 12 tribes of Israel. He didn't give birth. He said, let the name of Israel be named upon you. Heaven recognized it. If you study the movement of the tabernacle in the wilderness, Manasseh and Ephraim are part of the 12 tribes. And he looked at Reuben. He said, you stagger like the waters. He said, you are the excellency of my strength, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of wisdom. He said, but you went upon my bed with my concubine, and for that you shall not prosper. And the curse that he placed upon him, when he was talking to Judah, he said, these things he's saying will last until Shiloh comes. But another man journeyed through the portal of prayer, and as he shut down, he said, let Reuben live. Let Reuben live. And it was established. It was Moses that descended from the mountain. He said, if you are on the Lord's side, come this way. The Levites came and he said, from today, these ones are no longer part of Israel. They have been separated unto the Lord. They became the tribe of God. By prayer. That was not part of his itinerary when he went to pray. It was not part of his objective. But when he journeyed in prayer, a point came where he could touch heaven from it. It was Moses that told God. He said, repent of these things. He said, how can the God of Israel do this kind of evil? He said, you want the Egyptians to now go and tell the nations that you deliver them from Egypt. This is a man giving counsel to God. How do men grow and become so mighty? The Bible said Moses went to the mountain. He fasted for 40 days, came back with the covenant. And then he broke it out of anger. He fell on his face and he was there for 40 days praying again. That's 80 days. Where he's praying, where he's going to, that's not where you are going. Because when he prays, he travels out of his body. You will die if you don't drink water for 40 days. Am I correct? Where are my doctors? You will die. And then he got up from there immediately and he went back to the mountain and stayed for another 40 days. It's not this prayer we are praying here and there. When somebody prays for 30 minutes and he has not taken a new prayer point. You know when the new prayer point comes, there is a way he helps you to recalibrate. <laughs> so when we pray, we look at time. We try to strengthen our we. Yeah, you know that time the Lord helped me. I prayed every day for five hours. For three months. Yeah, I'm hoping that by next month I will still... Yeah, let me join it. Let me join it. All his journey is in his soul. When he comes out, he has imagination that he is raising the dead. And then he walks like a man who is raising the dead. Moses was not like that. He said, I saw upon the mountain the Lord descending with 10,000 of his sin. He said, from Mount Paran. It was the same thing that Enoch said many generations before him. He journeyed to where Enoch stood and he saw what Enoch saw. If you journey in prayer, you will stand where Elijah stood. I heard Andrew Womack. In the place of prayer and meditation, he saw the battle between David and Goliath. I've heard strange things. People like Peter Tan wants to go for a meeting. He said he will see Jesus before he goes there. You know, Jesus appeared to Kenehagin seven times. That is a reality in his dispensation. A dispensation is coming where people will literally journey consciously into the spirit to find him because they have known the way. They have known the way. They know how to travel. Peter Tan wants to go for a meeting and he will consciously break into the spirit realm and see Jesus. He's still alive. By prayer. If you have the right information, you have the right motivation. 
If you have the right motivation, you have the right approach. If you have the right approach, you have the right results. Prayer. We trivialize hallowed things. We trivialize things that have immortal essence and meaning. The reason God takes us through a tight corner sometimes is so that we come to a point where we are relieved of every other thing our confidence is hinged on. You know, sometimes you think you are praying until you come into a circumstance where there is no way out. For the first time, you will cry for your spirit. Then you will realize that every other thing you were doing was a show in the flesh. You come to that point where you throw your hand here, there's nothing to hold. You throw your hand here, nothing to hold. Then for the first time, if you speak in tongues, you will hear what tongue is. Because you will cry from your spirit. You have come to a point where if God doesn't answer, you are mad forever. What God to teach you by alignment is to come to a point where every time you lift your voice in prayer, you will pray like that. That is the kind of life Jesus had. And he could stand in front of the tomb and he said, I thank you, Father, that you always hear me. There is no, there is no, there, it doesn't, it, 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 you are not trying to verify. I thank you, Father, that you always hear me. If there is no prayer, if you like, quote a thousand scriptures, nothing will happen. Because prayer takes you into the atmosphere of creation. The Bible said, the spirit of God hovered upon the waters. There was chaos. God didn't start talking. He hovered. He enveloped the whole chaos into him until he submerged darkness in eternity. And then he caught forth light. There are principles of scriptures. But sometimes we are not well instructed. So we want to do it the way we feel we should do it. Or the way we feel like. These things are not done the way you feel like. They are done the way of scriptures. The way that has been prescribed. They are ancient landmarks. You don't move them. They don't shift. We pride in the wrong things. We do the best of things but we don't have the results. Because we pride in the wrong things. Prayer. Is the first proof that a man has entered into the training of alignment. Because it comes to a point where only God is who he can call upon his name. If you are a man who your first alternative and many other alternatives are outside of prayer, then you have not entered the path of alignment. Jesus had many alternatives as the Son of God, many. But when he went to John the Baptist, he said, Suffer it to be so for now. He said, Thus it becometh of us. To fulfill all righteousness. Apostles say you are not called to be creative in these matters. It is written. You follow it. He said, and I come in the volume of the books. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. That's a man in alignment. Every day, the Bible says, early in the morning, Jesus went into the mountain to pray. And then the disciples will come and say, ah, the moment they come, he say, let's go. And then they go to town and he rebukes the blind. He rebukes the deaf. And things are happening. They think it's about rebuking. Hope you know when you are a young Christian, you like to cast out demons. Get out! The day you say get out and you hear power. <laughs> then you will know that no, no, no. This thing is not in the intensity of your command. It is a life that is transmitted in your utterance. You see, Jesus said, when I speak to you, I'm not talking to educate you. You may be educated in the process. He said, but the words I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life. Because the words come from the spirit. It comes from the spirit. He said they are spirit. They are life. So when you journey in prayer, you have one destination. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. When Jesus was done praying, the Bible said he went in the power of the spirit. In the power. The word of God is power. But what he came to do on earth was only going to be done by the Spirit. Because, okay, we were in school of nursing last week, and Apostle told us, he said everything done outside of the Spirit is corruption. It has one destination, corruption. So Jesus knew that everything he must do must be by the Spirit. Even his death, the Bible said he gave up his, himself in the Holy Ghost. He died by the Spirit. He offered a blameless sacrifice by the Spirit. He spoke by the Spirit. 
In Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 2, when Luke was writing, he said he was writing to excellent Theophilus of all that Jesus both began to do and to say. And he said when he was about to be lifted, he gave commandment to the apostles through the Holy Ghost. Even the commandments he gave through the Holy Ghost. So if Jesus tells you, uh, brother, lock that door, he's telling you through the Holy Ghost. And that's why when you go to lock that door, you will find grace. Because he's not instructing you by understanding. He's instructing you by the Spirit. He said, Ogbe, go to Boko. He's speaking through the Spirit. So if you go to Boko, suddenly you will see a blind man and the eyes will open. And then you will run back and say, all, all the devils were casted out by our walls. He will laugh. Say, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. This thing I'm telling you, I spoke from a realm. I saw Satan fall like lightning. The reason you were casting out demons was because what I was telling you and the instruction I gave you, the commandment I gave you, I gave you through the Spirit. So the Spirit went with it. We know a lot of things. So we are separated from the realm. And that's why the focus, the goal, and the objective of everything we do is corruption. The most spiritual assignment, people do it in the flesh. But in those days, you can't even come to the apostolic community and lie. Because by the spirit, you will die. A man wants to lead prayer. He goes and kneels down and prays first. So that he will be helped. You know, when you are trained in the spirit, he, he trains your soul. So you also have the capacity to do it without the spirit. And he consciously trains your soul so that you will use your will to choose him. When you study the scripture, your mind will remember the scripture. But every time you go to minister, you pray for utterance. Even the sequence of revelation, you trust him for it. That is worship. That is alignment. Even though you know it in your head, you trust him to bring it to you. It's a training process that makes a spiritual man out of you. And a spiritual man is not a man with all kinds of garbages and disposition. A spiritual man is a man that is like Jesus. And it is only one way you can be like Jesus. is by the Holy Ghost. So, prayer becomes an, a reality we cannot do without. That's why we pray every day. But if you are not careful, it becomes a religious activity. You know that 4 p.m. every day, even if you pull your sand down and keep at home, the sand will start trekking to tent. <laughs> if you keep your suit at home, the suit will just start trekking to tent. <laughs> so now you know tent is just the way forward. And then when you come to tent, that's where you want to release yourself of all your weariness. <sighs> Sometimes we even go out and take a stroll. <laughs> See, we are all guilty. God is helping us gradually. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> but we have to become decisive. 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 And hallow the one that come to tabernacle in our midst. We have become so sense rude. That's why you see that in our generation now, revelation is heightened. Everything is about revelation. Everybody is seeing something. They want, we are ruled by our senses. If you came to this tent and then you now saw that every service, there's an angel standing here. There's one standing here. There's one standing here. And then there's a porter in this middle here that angels are descending and ascending. Every day you come to tent, your eye will be there. In fact, that's where you'll be praying. And then you become conscious. Because you are a soulish man. He said, we walk by faith, not by sensory perception. Sometimes when you begin to grow in God, your visions reduce. You come to a meeting, and then you are checking. You are trying God to give you a word of knowledge for the guy who is sick, and then there's no word of knowledge. He wants you to rebuke sickness by faith. That's what pleases the Father. He said, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. But you only come to that realm by prayer. If not, everything you know will be in your head. What journeys it from your head to your spirit is the activity of prayer. And prayer is effective when your focus is the Holy Ghost. Every time you pray outside of the Holy Ghost, every time your inspiration, your motivation, your energy is coming outside of the Holy Ghost, you have not begun. 
when the Holy Ghost mantles you, even the atmosphere will change. Because heaven is beginning to provide witness for the activity that you are carrying on land. That's when you begin to participate with the divine. That's when you begin to provide that which heaven has to offer to earth. Every other thing you are offering is dead layers of corruption. And that's why spiritual things are delicate. Because you can be doing the most spiritual thing, but you'll be outside of God all your life. Alignment. The Holy Ghost will carry you through a journey. A journey where he becomes the central reference, central focus of all you do. I heard Pastor Chris say something and I almost challenged it. But I sat down. The reason I calmed down was because this man had proof. I don't have proof. So if what he's doing is not true, then he won't have what he has. And if I claim that what I'm doing is the correct one, I should have results for what I'm doing. He said, <laughs> he said, the reason prayer is very important. And I said, wait, let me tell you something. He said, the church have said it before. That a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. He said, but that's not scriptural. He said, the power is not in prayer. He said, what prayer does is that it carries you into the realm of power. He said, the power is in the spirit. And he said, that's why Jesus said, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come. The Holy Ghost is the custodian of power. He said, Jesus went in the power of the spirit. But there's no way you can come to the layer of the spirit where there is power. Until you journey by prayer. He says, so when you pray, you are focused on the spirit. Because you can't do anything unless you have apprehended the spirit. And the only way you can apprehend the spirit is by prayer. He said, that is why Jesus made declarations after he has prayed. If you know these things, you will not be, you will not be lackluster about your prayer life. You can go for a meeting and you see the dead rise. And then you go for the next meeting. You are shouting. People are looking at you like this. And then some will be dozing. You can even preach the same message. The message you preach the other time and demon were screaming. Ah! Ah! Then you say, oh boy, thank God. Oh, make I carry, let me carry this message to this meeting. And then you gather, you package the message. And then you carry the same message. You are saying it word for word. And then people are looking at you like this. They want to help you, but see, they are overladen by tiredness. So, even the guy in front that wants to encourage you, he just, he's just, he's overtaken by sleep. He tried to encourage you, but see, the body is much. <laughs> so, then you discover it's not about the message. It's about the partnership with the Holy Ghost. So when you know this thing, you will lie down and pray and ask for mercy. Ah, you will. Especially for those who are traveling ministers. Or those who minister by inspiration. <laughs> you can come with your mighty language. Then you enter as you climb the pulpit. Your soul doesn't ascend. You do like this, do like this. Nothing is coming. Then you discover that even the English you are speaking is not from your head. Because what happens is this. Even the sentences, they are rushing through your mind like a tap. Those who minister by inspiration, they know what I'm saying. The sentences, they run into your mind like a tap. That's why you can hear apostle make 10 compound sentences without pausing. It's not because he's so intelligent. His soul is open to a frequency. That thing is rushing like a tap. If you go for a meeting and your soul doesn't ascend, you will try. Then you will discover that, oh, we need to be helped. <laughs> prayer, prayer, prayer. If you know it, every time you come to the place of prayer, you will humble yourself. For God to carry you, and you'll be very objective about it. Prophet Ezekiel was teaching us, he said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. He said, the word effectual is there is well-targeted prayer, focused and objective prayer. It's not like boxing the wind. It's a lie. That guy is tired. <laughs> I think he's in the spirit. So we just go and then go and squat on something. Ah, it's a lie. Then the angel that is walking with you, we just look at you in Jesus. Can you be so carnal? Instead of asking God to help you, your goal now is the people. What will the people say? Ah, me like this. I came for VG, I'm sleeping. And then, 
Then you see some people, they just... Ah, you will look at them and say, oh boy, this man is, is dangerous man. The guy is far. <laughs> He's sleeping far in the soul Israel. <laughs> we are fake. We are carnal. We don't have the fear of God. <laughs> if you are tired, why deceive the people? Is it the people that is your focus? The people are not even your first audience. And like I said, before God, whom I stand. So if it comes to the place of prayer, it's God that is his first objective. His first audience is God. So if he's tired, he will ask God, help me, help me, help me, help me. Peter was falling. He didn't care about those who were in the boat. If he was thinking, oh boy, I wanted to carry out a storm. What will Andrew say? He would have died. His goal was not the people in the boat. He said, Jesus, help me. And the Bible said, Jesus came quickly. If Jesus had not rushed, he would have died. He came quickly. You, you came before God and you are conscious about the other people. Who is looking at you? Who told you they are looking at you? I sat one day, somebody messed up and I pitied the person. And then in less than five seconds, I forgot. And all through the meeting, the person was feeling so awkward. Ha! And I now said, is this how this thing happens? I don't even remember this person did this thing again. And see, this person is still conscious that he's no longer part of this meeting. Because in his proud head, he thought everybody was looking at him and nobody cares about him. Instead of him to do business with God, he thought, who, who told you people have your time? Because you did mistake in the pulpit here, they quarreled you. Then he now came, you sat down. You thought everybody was looking at you till the end of the meeting. You are a proud man. If you check the heart of people, they are forgotten. They don't care. They came with their own problem. And if you are wise, you will face Jesus with your own. We waste life. We waste time. We waste destiny. Why do you come every day if you know it's not working? And if you are sure it's working, why don't you try for it to work for you? Why don't you find out how does this thing work and pour yourself into it until it begins to work? Will you waste all your life? Waste all your time? And then at the end of the day, you are old and you discovered you have not apprehended. There are people that even relocate from one place to another, yet they don't touch reality. And the devil is aware. He knows that one of the gates of corruption is the gate of pride. And is willing to exploit it to the latter. You have escaped and shut the gate of the lust of, of the eyes. You have shut the gate of the lust of the flesh. So you told yourself, to her with my certificate. You told yourself, even if it doesn't work, I will pour myself to Jesus. And then you traveled from your city in Abuja. Traveled from Lagos. Traveled from Port Harcourt, And you came to a creek in Benue. You hid behind the mountains. You were struggling with mosquitoes under the cave. And yet everything that is being done, you cannot access. Because you came and suddenly, the first week you came, they now say, ah, this man is a prophet. Then your three years of stay in Makot, you want to prove to everybody you are a prophet. And then you lose out the reason why you came. You came and then they say, ah, this man studies the Bible. He's a reader of the book of God. And then all of a sudden, all your life, you want to prove to everybody that you are a man of the world. Every time they ask you to speak, you begin your introduction with these scriptures. And then the waters that you came to draw, you never touch it until you journey back. Them that are wise, they have a focus in the spirit. He said, with joy, shall ye draw up waters out of the wells of salvation. Every time we join in the spirit, we have a goal, we have a focus. But you need to first of all reorient yourself. You need to change your mind. You need to realize that everything you can ever amount to is built on one foundation. That foundation is called prayer. That's why Jesus prophesied after he prayed. That's why Jesus healed the sick after he prayed. That's why Jesus went to meet the people after he prayed. The reason you have poured yourself into prayer is because the world is waiting for you. What will you do after you have stayed here all this while and then you go without an answer for the world? Satan knew that the reason we engage spiritual realities is because creation is in bondage and only the sons of God can bring salvation. That is why when he collided with Jesus, his focus was, are you the son of God? And Jesus was not distracted. 
he focused because he knew until the protocol of alignment is fulfilled, he can never go out with the power of the Spirit. The moment Jesus went out, the Bible said he went in the power of the Spirit. And he said his fame was spread abroad. His fame said that it might be fulfilled. Which was written by Isaiah the prophet. So if Jesus had not gone through that layer of training, does that mean that prophecy by Isaiah would not have been fulfilled? Yes. Because before he went there, he was a carpenter. But the man Isaiah spoke about, he said he is a light. Before a carpenter can be refined to become a light, he must have of necessity gone through the corridor of alignment. In alignment, your, your vistas are, they are refocused. Then you see beyond your circumstance, you see beyond yourself. He said, turn these stones to bread. Was Jesus not hungry? Yes, he was. Did Jesus need food? Yes. When he came home, he rushed and ate. But he was able to see beyond the circumstances. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is in the gateway of alignment that you are recalibrated. They told you now to go to Guruku, it may be hard. Because you have a plan, you have a, a vision, you have purpose for life, you have dreams. Until you pass through alignment, you're, you can't be recalibrated. You will only see from your circumstance. You will look upon the bread and begin to imagine how sweet it is. You will begin to imagine the impact of the hunger. But when you have been aligned, then you begin to see from the realm of God. And most times, God may not even come to do anything about it. But it doesn't matter anymore. Because what you are doing is that you are actually partnering with the divine. The reason God can be in a territory is because an aligned man has shown up. So you become more concerned about the plans of God, the purposes of God, the, the will of the Father. We have people running around with titles, apostles and prophets. But when there is money in the government house, it is the bishops that lead the way. What happens to the territory? What happens to the purpose of God for the land? There is no alignment. So they are vista is still at the level of judging things based on their circumstance. They say, talk this stone to bread. They say, that is a wise counsel. You know, wisdom is profitable to direct. I actually need bread now. How come I didn't think about it? And the power is there. And they turn the stone to bread. And they become the servant of the devil. They don't know when they became, they fell from princes to become servant. Because him whom you yield yourself, servant to obey. He said, the servant of him whom you are. It can, it can come as a counsel. It can come as a law. It can come as an instruction. But only wise men can begin to choose the choices of God. And the only time by which you will get there is when you have been refined through the pathway of alignment. The word of God that was given to you was to mend the cracked and the damaged creation. The Bible said through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. The word framed there is the word katakizo. It means to mend, to mend, to correct, to reconfigure. But the only men who has the power and the ability to reconfigure are the men that have been aligned. Because they will call them the sons of God. He said Jesus was the brightness of his glory. So the man that was mending creation was not an ordinary man. It was a man that have come to, he has come to a point where everything that is of humanity has been purged. When you look at Jesus, what you see is the express image of the Father. The brightness of his glory. That's a man that has the ability to mend the world. The reason witchcraft will continue in your family is because you have not been aligned. The day the gateway of alignment is complete, you will rise up and you will say, you, go and marry. By what technology will Jacob come and say, I bless you with corn. I bless you with wine. I bless you with the dew of heaven. There was no rain falling. There was the wine. A man who knows how to connect to heaven. Jesus. He's a wonder. That's why the end of alignment is power. If the truth, if of the truth you have completed alignment, your life will become an effulgence of power. You become a ruler among the sons of the Assyrians. It doesn't matter what they do. You can come to a territory and lock the gate of heaven. Even the elements of creation will obey you. We are making decrees. Nothing is happening because we are not aligned. The end of alignment is power. Apostles said we were born by power. We were created for power. 
He said, we were bettered by a God of power. He said, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even the kingdom, the purpose, and the will of God, we say we want to fulfill is by power. He said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He didn't give you any other thing to advocate, to legislate, and to advance his kingdom. He gave you power. You enter into the gate of power when your obedience is complete. Because he said, when your obedience is complete, then you can avenge other disobedience. There are people going out trying to avenge disobediences when they are rebellious, gimmicks, psychophants, hypocrites of the highest order, inspired by darkness, and they want to change the civilization that have raised them all their lives. How do you come to contend with the demon of immorality when you are his slave? How do you contend with the demon of manipulation when you yourself you are an agent of manipulation? You think it's when you hold the mic. Nothing happens when you hold the mic. It is the God that you are yielded to in the spirit that we speak when you're on the microphone. And when these things become real, without mic, without sound, the kingdom of God will still manifest among men. The greatest feat that these men of God you see on the media today, they did. They didn't do it on the media. They did it when they were rugged and cruel men. Chief will always tell you here that we are praying now. They are holding the mic like this because we have gone to the nations. When prayer was going on here, people will run and collide with the wall. Somebody will hold the mic. Sometimes you will throw it away. You will know because you are overtaken by the spirit of prayer. Now when you people are praying, you composed prayers by the Holy Ghost because you have known the corridor. People will think that is all there is to it. You can't change the world that have raised you. The angel of the Lord came to Zacharias. He told him that his son will go in the spirit and in the powers of Elias. But for that to be fulfilled, in Luke chapter 1 verse 80, he said John was separated into the wilderness until the day of his showing forth. Everything of that civilization had to be purged from him. So he had no appetite for anything. When he came, he came as a judge over that world. He said, Savior shall arise from Mount Zion to judge the mountains of Esau. It is only from Zion that saviors are born. What alignment does for you is that he carries you to the path of life until you appear in Zion. When you come out of Zion, you can judge the iniquities of your world. At that time, your obedience is complete. At that time, when you speak, is the government of heaven that you are giving expression to. The power is hidden in obedience. It is locked up in obedience. And only aligned men can touch of it. A man who has aligned with God is one with him. That's why the Bible said if such men backslide, it says it's difficult to reclaim them. They, they have touched of the powers of the age to come. When they show up, what they do is that they beg the kingdom. They come with the burdens of the kingdom. If such men tell you this is it, even if that was not God was saying, God will do it because they have secured oneness with him. I looked upon the scriptures and I, was, I marveled how that Paul will be given instruction by the Holy Ghost and the point will come. He will say, but concerning virgins, he said, God did not speak to me about this. He said, but I speak as a man. What? Can the words of a man be equated with scriptures? I thought the Bible said all scriptures were given by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Where did he journey to in God that his own words can be measured equally with the words of God? He went to the wilderness of Arabia. He left everything and he stayed with the Holy Ghost until he taught him what it means to become an apostle. Where have you gone to in God? When you pray, where are you journeying to? When you fast, where are you going to? When you study the scriptures, where are you going to? Does it take you to the realm of God or it takes you to the fullness of your pride? Does it take you to the realm of God or it takes you to the fullness of your visions, your desires and your ambition? Your orientation is distorted. So you have nothing to offer the world. Because the world is already a progression of darkness. Demons, entities from the demonic realm are coming with different kinds of wisdom to bet different civilizations, different operations, different dimensions. The only thing we have to add to this world, it is what is found in the landscape of heaven. And only men who have journeyed there can bet it here. If you have not gone there, you can't bet it here. It is only people who have traveled to the spirit 
that can bring spiritual resources because the resources are not in the natural they are in the spirit I want us to pray today for at least 30 minutes because in recent times my body is not to see the power of God move it's something I can do consciously but people are slain they, be, they, they amount to nothing nobody is making decision for Jesus Nobody is making a commitment for Jesus. Even the people that are in the ministry that you think, ah, thank God he has secured these ones. When you see pastors discuss, if you are not careful, you will fall down and your faith will crash. When you see pastors negotiate honorarium, honorarium, pastors, the goal of the meeting, the goal of the travel, the goal of everything they were saying on the altar is to create enough giving so that honorarium will be paid. And then they bargain over on radio. If you see some of the discussions of pastors, then you will begin to cry. It's not about what we are doing. Where are we standing with God? People need to begin to make conscious decisions so that their life can profit the world to come. Apostle says salvation is a capital God put in your heart. He said, but what you do for God is the profit that you bring upon that capital. By the time you journey to eternity, what, how many blocks of the kingdom would you have put in your own dispensation? Because it is a house God is building. He's building it through time. By the time time is accomplished, that world will descend as the new Jerusalem. Which block would you have put there? All the faith you have exercised is to receive things from God. What have you contributed to the building of God? Something is rising in the spirit. Men are laying blocks, laying blocks, some by their blood, some by their witnesses. The Bible said, These women, he said, they caught forth their sons back to life. He said, Some in the face of deliverance, they rejected it. He said, That they may have a better resurrection, a resurrection that will give them profit before God. Because they realize that the value of life is not in time. The value of life is in eternity. So how much of eternity you superimpose in time is what will determine who you are in eternity. So they said if only our death would be a witness to Jesus, we would die gladly. We didn't have the opportunity to preach the gospel. But now you have attacked us, you have deceived us. And you want us to choose death because of Jesus. This is the only opportunity we have to witness. We will die gladly. If you have read church history, you begin to wonder if it's the same Jesus you believe. You will even pray that God should help. Let them be enough space in the new Jerusalem. Because if you see what people did, you will wonder if you will have a slot there. I heard stories of, of women like Felicita. A pregnant woman. They kept her for seven months, waiting for her to deliver. Because the child is innocent. Perpetual and Felicita. Her and her maid. They said, we would have killed you now, but since your baby is innocent, wait until you deliver. What was she waiting for? They were waiting for her to deliver so that she would be killed because she rejected Jesus. And she was aware of the kind of death that she would be afflicted with. After she gave birth, two days later, a woman that gave birth with all the injuries, they brought her to the arena, stripped her naked, and they released white beasts upon them. And the lions tore them apart, and they were praying why they died. What kind of conviction did they have? I heard story of, of, of John, the beloved a disciple. His name was called Polycarp. At the age of 86, an old man. They went and carried him. And he said, the people that came to arrest him, he gave them food to eat. He was at rest, dying for Jesus. And when they dragged him to the arena, they said, deny Jesus. Old man, we'll leave you. We don't want to kill you. You've been a good man. He said, 80 and 6 years have I served him. And he has never offended me. He said, how can I do this evil? And he was set on fire. He was set ablaze. He was burned. And why they burned him? The Bible said he looked to heaven. They stopped. He looked to heaven. As the flame rose to heaven. He didn't struggle with that. You see, the Jesus who believed that they believed. You are still struggling over ambition. Your life has not been demanded of you. God is just saying, go to a, a rural place and it's difficult for you. 
do you think you have really believed? It is only men who are lying and that are relevant in the hands of God. Apostle said, alignment is the strength of giants. When you see a man who is a giant in the kingdom, he has understood the technology of alignment. These stories are many. Ahead of the Moravian brothers. These men, the only way they could preach the gospel in the city where they were going, because they are, they are country, they are not allowed in that city. So what they did was that they sold themselves as slaves. Because that was the only way they could enter the city. So they sold themselves, collected the money, gave it out, and they carried them to the city as slaves. If by any means they enter that city, let them be witnesses. God told them to carry the witness of Jesus to a city. There was no way they could enter. They sold themselves as slaves. If such a man wants to preach John 3.16, he will preach it with life. Because he knows what it truly means for God to die for sinners. You may quote it. I tell you the truth, you don't know it. If you know it, the moment you receive it, everything about your life will be to give the same to another person. And your ambition will not be too big to stand against it. What we do is not an activity. It's not a religion. It's life being dispensed through human vessels. It's God being on the manifestation. It's God being presented like a theater through human vessels. Every time they touch you, everything that will come out of you is God. Because your life has been submitted on the altar as a sacrifice. You may think it's about the pulpit. When you come to the pulpit, then you discover the microphone is not enough. Everything about your life is supposed to sing the witness of Jesus. When you go to the market, your utterances, the people you greet, the people you talk to, the people you live with, your life is supposed to be an amplifier of the life of Jesus. It has nothing to do with pulpit. How many times do you pray? I traveled to Oka two weeks ago. I preached in seven meetings in three days and I almost died. Then I discovered the pulpit is not enough. Because you meet more people in your everyday life than you will ever meet carrying the microphone. Your life is supposed to be a witness. And that can only happen when you submit yourself as a sacrifice. Because everything about this realm is destined to corrupt, to die, to waste. The only thing that we pass through this realm is what is sacrificed to Jesus. And it is the quality of sacrifice that will determine the value you have in the world to come. Can you ask Jesus to help you? I don't motivate people while preaching anymore. If the word of God is not enough to convict you, nothing will convict you. Because the Holy Spirit only bears witness to the world. Some of us have come to a point where our heart is so hardened. Jesus called it an evil heart. He called it an evil heart. Why do you pray every day? It's so that you can journey deep into the realm of life. It is until you come to that place you cannot dispense of the verities of God. You can't. Even if you will it. Even if you try. Even if you charge. You can't. Because it only happens by the Spirit. It happens by the Spirit. You ask Jesus to help you. Because until you are confronted with your worst fear, you will never, you will never can tell whether you are truly convicted or not. The day you collide with your worst fear, that's the day you will tell whether conviction has been born in your heart. The message I came with, I couldn't even preach it. God is speaking to somebody. I came with a message on my iPad, but I couldn't look upon it. And sometimes you come for a meeting, striving for your soul to ascend, and then you come in an ascended state. And the Holy Ghost steps you down. He said, no, talk to them. Let them hear what they need to hear for the season. <laughs> like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, you 
don't need to. No, no, no. Just keep it calm. Don't scare anybody. Let's learn to travel. Moses said, be still. You will see the salvation of God. Let them learn to travel. See, when we stand and we are praying loud, some of us can pray for long. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.